Hi there, I'm welcome Michael to Varsity Sports Show Live. I'm Connor.
Hi, my name is Eric Perry and I'm the proud owner of Eco Roofing Solutions. I've been in this industry for over 25 years and I'm the current president of the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association. Our mission is to provide the absolute best customer experience and we operate all over the entire state of Arizona. We will come out and provide a courtesy, no obligation roof inspection to you as well as an estimate within 24 hours. Our team is dedicated to providing the best quality product and workmanship and we're here to serve you. You can call us at 480-695-7736 or check us out online at ecoroofaz.com. To learn more about us, you can find me on Instagram at yourbeardedroofer or at ecoroofingsolutionsaz. We are proud supporters of our community's youth in the next generation and we would love for you to come and join the hashtag ecofamily today. Call Eric and his team at Eco Roofing Solutions, 480-695-7736, and they'll give you a fast, free, no-nonsense estimate. Tell them Vince sent you. When you think of family restaurants and sports bars, think Bonfire. Bonfire is part of the Tempe landscape, supporting local schools. Join the Bonfire Booster Club Challenge. Mention Corona del Sol, Desert Vista, Marcos Denisa, Mountain Point, or Valley Christian, and that school's sports program will earn loyalty points. The winner after football season will earn a fundraiser at Bonfire. Come for the food and fun. Support the community. Bonfire. Open every day east of I-10 on Warren. Show your game ticket all day Friday and Saturday and get 15% off. 480-306-6801. Hi there, welcome to Varsity Sports Show Live. I'm Connor Manning here also with Michael Manning, the Coconino Panthers. Arcadia coming off an impressive 31-14 win. Name of the game was Brady Force, three touchdown passes. And Coconino 2-0 in the Gary Cook era, new head coach. Coconino coming out of the Grand Canyon region in Flagstaff. 2-0 beat Carl Hayden in week one and then 3-8 Pete Payson last week. This is their first real test of the year against Arcadia. Coconino came down here last year, lost 27-21. Arcadia is 5-0 all-time against Coconino, and there's a lot of new for the Panthers this year. New quarterback in Colton Buckingham, a lot of a new talent after losing some seniors, and it will be a big test for both teams. And welcome everyone to Arcadia High School here for this Friday night. Big matchup here between the undefeated Coconino Panthers and the Arcadia Titans who are 3-0 as well. I'm Connor Manning here joined by my broadcast colleagues Bobby Murphy and Michael Manny. How are we doing tonight, fellas? I'm doing good tonight. Just a beautiful night in, in Phoenix, Arizona. And of course, like you said, Arcadia Titans first the Coconino Panthers. I mean, it should be a great game. Two undefeated teams and Coconino came all the way down from Flagstaff. So I'm, I'm excited to see a good battle. Yes, speaking of Coconino coming down for Flagstaff, Michael, I know that you're from Flagstaff, and I know that you have covered Arcadia for a few years, so tell us what we're to expect tonight from our, uh, co from Coconino. Yeah, Connor, it's a good night for football, and the Panthers are usually predicated on a strong run game, but they're starting to develop a bit of a passing game, too. Quarterback Colton Buckingham made his varsity debut last week after missing week one against uh, Carl Hayden with an injury. Uh, 13 touchdown passes, but when you think of Coconino Panther football, it starts with the running game, and that starts with Bridger French. Started out the year playing quarterback, and uh, new head coach Gary Cook of the Panthers put Bridger in a lot of run pass option situations. Threw two touchdowns in the opener, has six on the ground so far. And they've got a pretty good defense, too. Yeah, so speaking of great defense, two games against Carl Hayden and against Payson, 93-3 to was the score. So not really tested very well the first two games. This will be a big test for Coconino. This will also be a big test for Arcadia. Arcadia started out the year with a big 34-6 to win against St. Mary's. Then they had that tough thriller down in Sarita against the Walden Grove Falcons, and then last week they kind of cruised most of that game against Ben Franklin. It was 31-0 at one point. Ben Franklin got a couple of touchdowns back, but at that point the game was already wrapped. So looking forward to a great matchup tonight against two teams that are looking to be pretty strong contenders in the 4A race as we have the coin toss here between the captains. And we are just about 65, 64 seconds away from kickoff. And for our Arcadia, I mean, I know Ray Brown is happy with the 3-0 start, but he's not happy enough just yet. They could start 4-0 for the first time since 2019 when they finished the season 6-4. Started off 5-0 that year, so the Titans are looking to do something tonight that they haven't done in the last few seasons. But 
The offense has looked great so far this season. Braylon Rooney leading the offense. They've scored 34, 34, and 31 points in their three wins. And the defense has been just as good, if not as good as the offense. But this is just such a well-balanced team overall for the Titans. Well, and speaking of last year, this is we are actually witnessing a rematch here. Coconino came down to Arcadia last year, built a big 21-0 lead, but Arcadia stormed back, starting with a huge 79 run. 79-yard run, came back and won 27-21, a heartbreaker that Michael really derailed Coconino's season. They were 3-0 at that point. Well, Coconino, that was one of the storylines for their 2022 season is they built up a big lead against Arcadia. They built up a big lead against All Apache right, Junction. They built up a big lead field, against Houston. The they were finished 4-6 and six last year, but they very easily could have had 7 or 8 wins but couldn't close the deal in many of those games. Arcadia was one of those. Coconino getting ready to kick off here to start this big matchup between 4A powerhouses. Kicking off for the Panthers is Jose Miguel Villanueva, the junior. We've got a packed crowd at Arcadia High School tonight with the, the it was the, 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 young, the young Titans for tonight with all the, the future Arcadia students coming in on the field before the game as we are off tonight. Brady Force back to return, gets out to the right side, has some room, out to the 40 and is forced out of bounds. Great return for Force. He was kind of our player of the game last week, three touchdowns, really helped guide the Titans to that victory and he's looking to be another big piece for Arcadia tonight. And we've talked a lot about Brady Force this year as their star running back. The 5'7 senior, 165, he's just so shifty, has such a good burst of speed on him all the time, and he's just such a great runner and ball catcher as well for that Titans offense. Well, another big playmaker for the Titans who we expect to have a big night tonight is junior quarterback Braylon Rooney, who's really stepped up this year. He has five touchdowns, one interception through the air, 480 yards passing on a 69% completion percentage, and he has really been big for the Titans offense with uh, being really efficient. Oh, and before the first start, before the first snap, we already have the towels flying through the air, and it's going to be a false start on Coconino. So a good start in terms of Arcadia. They're starting now with a pretty. And that was the story for Coconino last week against Payson. They won that game handily, but the first half especially was marred by unnecessarily mental errors, false starts, encroachments, things of that nature. That was something that I know head coach Gary Cook preached this week to fix. Well, they can't afford to be making those errors now, especially against this team as Brady, Brady Force gets to the outside into Coconino territory. He is pushed out of bounds and a flag. That was Prayer Young Blackgoat, the outside linebacker, pushed Brady Force out of bounds. And I believe Force was already out of bounds when he got pushed. And referee said that's not going to work. And they're going to tack on a few more yards after that big run. So Brady Force already providing an impactful start for this game. And, of course, with only one snap into the game, two big plays by Brady Force, just getting outside there with a huge burst of speed, able to get a big gain on that first and five for the Titans. Well, some of the biggest things that we've noticed about Arcadia as we've covered them this season is they have a few weapons that really can be effective. Not only do you have Braden Rooney through the air and with his legs, but Brady Force as well, consistently every game providing big plays for Arcadia. Brady Young Blacko, one of the one of the biggest thumpers in the 4 a conference. Great closing speed and a hard hitter, but you can't late hit out of bounds. That's a tough break on the opening drive for the Coconino defense. Well, just like that, 14 seconds into the game, Arcadia has the ball on the Coconino 15. Rooney takes a snap, fakes the handoff, throws to the outside. He's going to the end zone, and it is caught! Touchdown, Arcadia! Jeremy Smith, and just like that, sudden impact. Arcadia is up 6-0, and if you're Coconino, that couldn't have been more of a disastrous start on defense. And Ray Brown has to be happy with those first few plays there. Only two plays on that touchdown drive, of course, before the big return, the big run, and then Rooney rolling out to the left, just dropping that ball into a bucket for Jeremy Smith there, beautiful. Well, and we were talking about how balanced this Arcadia team is. It starts off with that 35-yard run by Brady Force. You tack on the 15 because of the penalty, and then that easy 15-yard pass by Braden Rooney, who we know can get comfortable outside of the pocket. 
Looks like Braylon Rooney is going to come in and hold this extra point for Garrig Heil, one of the best kickers in the state of Arizona, Ray Brown believes. But we've seen Garrig Heil just with a lot of long kicks pregame during the game. He's been a great kicker for this team so far this year. We know that he can get points on the board for the Titans. And he connects on the extra point there. 7 nothing Arcadia, just 19 seconds into this game. Michael, if you're Coconino, how do you respond? Well, uh, first off, you just that was twice on that drive were just avoidable mental mistakes. That is what derailed that drive defensively for Coconino. It's only, it's only 7 nothing. You just have to get out and go and do what you do, what they do best. For Coconino, that's running the football and dominating the line of scrimmage. This Arcadia front is a good one, but Coconino's got one of the best running games in the 4A conference, so I know that's what they're going to start off on. Well, one of the best running games in the conference is an understatement. This team is averaging 218 yards on the ground, and they were led by Fernando Ramirez, who is unfortunately out with an injury tonight. So they are going to look to Hayden Mickelson for a lot of the running back duties, but also for Bridger French, who we were talking about, has seen quarterback duties, but is also one of the main running backs for this team. Bridger also can play quarterback. He's done that the first couple games this year in the Oasis. Kind of putting him, like you mentioned in the free game, in, in run-pass option situations. So they've got two very capable quarterbacks. Well, it'll be up to this Coconino offense to try and respond. A run-heavy team trying to slow down the momentum. It is loud here in Arcata trying to quiet the crowd as that kick is booted into the end zone by Garrick Heil and Coconino will start the ball at the 20. And for the Panthers, first year with coach Gary Cook, he's been coaching for 40 plus years. Really long time coach, he's coached at a bunch of different schools, North and, North and Shadow Mountain, Phoenix College as well, and now he's in his first year at Coconino. Well, we talked. We were able to sit. We were able to talk with Gary Cook before the game, and he knows what team that he knows who they're coming up against. And you can't imagine that he's too happy. He's too thrilled about that start. But Coconino gets their opportunity here. Colton Buckingham in shotgun formation. He's got French, who takes the handoff, and he gets tripped up at about the 28-29 yard line for a gain of about eight. That's a perfect start for Coconino. Just getting the ball to Bridger French and trying to get him out in space. And, la and like we've all talked about, Bridger French is such a powerful runner for this team. The 5'11", 180 pound senior, just such a strong runner for that team. Second down and two, they have him down at the 28. Buckingham in shotgun formation with French to his right. Takes the snap, hands it off to French, and he's going to muscle his way to about the 32-yard line for a first down. And that's a big first first few plays for the Panthers. There, just keep just moving the chains with with French, and they'll be able to do a lot of damage on the ground this game. Coconino taking their time, letting the clock run down here as they get set for this first down play. Buckingham once again in shotgun formation. He's got French right behind him. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Hands off to French again, and he goes nowhere. He maybe got back to the line of scrimmage there. Great job by the Arcadia front to sniff out the run after French really had no trouble getting through the offensive line those first two plays. And now if you're Coconino, we talked about they have that run pass option. Do you maybe set French in potentially? Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing is that this Arcadia front, I almost think we don't talk about them enough because we spend so much time on the offense because of how explosive the offense is. But that's a tough challenge for this Coconino offensive line, as good as it is. Well, no one can forget two weeks ago at Walden Grove. That Arcadia defensive line winning the game, and he goes deep, and it is caught. That is Noble Young Blackout with the catch inside Arcadia territory, down at the 42. And that's Prayer's younger brother. Noble, also a great athlete in his own right, plays both sides. And that's what I mentioned early on. 
Coconino getting a little bit of a passing game going to complement their running game. That just makes this offense all the more dangerous. 30 yard gain there on the reception by Black Goat. First down and 10. Takes a snap, he's gonna look for a pass again. He's actually gonna take off, but Arcadia right there. And, and like you said, Michael, I mean, this Arcadia front seven, not talk about it as much as the offense, because the offense has been so strong this year, but that front seven has been so dominant so far this season, especially against St. Mary's, and against Walden Grove, they were able to stop the run very well, and of course, Ben Franklin last week as well. That was senior John Coulter with the tackle catching up to Buckingham, not allowing him to really go anywhere. Second down and 10 for the Panthers. Buckingham takes a snap, pitches it off to French. French up the right side. Evades a first attacker and he stays on his feet. Still won't go down, down to the 22, multiple flags down. This might negate a big run. And what a great power option there by, there by the Panthers offense. Buckingham going out to the right and just pitching it to French at the last second, and he's able to get a big run there, pending that, the flag. That pitch can be really effective because he's already got a running start. He has some room as they're sorting out the mess. And it looks like the run, it is going to be a spot foul from the end of the run. And it's a holding on Arcadia. And after that run by French, that looks like it's gonna be a first and 10 on about the 15 or so yard line for this Panthers offense. We were trying to figure out where exactly they were gonna place the ball. There were multiple, there were flags thrown at different times. It looked like there was one during the run and then one at the end of the play and yep, they're gonna move it further. So it looks like there was a second penalty on the Titans and they are going to move them down to what looks like the five yard line. It looks like you're settled down right at the five, so it's gonna be first and goal for Coconino. And Michael, can we take a guess at who's probably gonna punch this in on this first down play? In a perfect world, Coconino knows exactly who they're gonna give it to. But who knows, this Arcadia front has been known to stuff the run. They've done it twice already. Buckingham takes a snap, the pitch to French to the outside, and looks like he stops short at about the one or two. It looked like it was number 16, Pablo Havalera, that was there to make the stop. And it'll be second and goal for the Panthers. And that Titans offense right there, I mean, that, sorry, that Titans defense right there, obviously they were able to stop French from getting into the end zone there, but it, on the snap it didn't look like they had a bunch of heads on him right from the jump. Havalera, one of the Titans leading tacklers last week too. Oh, and the ball fell. French was able to recover, but they lost yardage. A potentially disastrous play. Salvaged by French, and it'll be third down from about the two or three yard line. And that is not what you wanted if you were Coconino. No, and that's just another one of those unforced errors. That, that's still excellent field position near the goal line, but Against a tough Arcadia team like this that can score at will, you want to take advantage of every opportunity in the red zone if you're Coconino. Well, speaking of opportunities, you got to imagine if this is four down territory, if you, if you go for it no matter what, if you don't get it here. Buckingham under center. He's going to fake the run, throws it, and it is incomplete. His intended target was young Black Goat, it was Noble. He had the ball in his hands, but he dropped it. And it is fourth down and goal from the two. And it looks like Gary Cook is going to keep his offense out on the field. And I like that play call a lot by Gary Cook there. Instead of just running up the middle with French again, just get some pass in there. And it looks like they had a good look at it too. But this fourth down here, if they decide to go for it, 
fourth and five from a fourth and goal from about the five yard line. It looks like they will be going for it. I think they're actually going to settle for the field goal, take the points. And if you're Coconino, you had first and goal from the five. And the kick is good. So they will salvage some points out of this drive. But Michael, first and goal from the five, you really wanted that touchdown. You do, but the field goal is not the worst thing in the world. What would have been the worst thing in the world is not getting points at all. So if you're Coach Cook, you'll take the points, even if you wanted the touchdowns. Speaking of field goals, Jose Miguel P. in the way, but an excellent kicker for Coquino. Whoever's soccer player who has a really good leg on him, kind of similar to Gary Kyle. Well, after facing their first real offensive test all year and giving up a touchdown quite quickly, it is up to this Coconino defense to see if they can settle into this game and try and slow down that dynamite Arcadia offense we were talking about, who, Michael, as you said, can score at will, averaging over 30 points a game in their three games so far. And back to receive the kick is Jackson Crandall and Brady Forrest. Forrest took the opening kickoff out to the 40. And you got to wonder if you're Coconino, are you kicking in the other side now or are you trying to kick for the end zone? Looks like it's going to be short and it is forced again. He takes it from about the four. Up the middle, takes a big hit. That is number 23 for Coconino, Array Cowboy, the junior tight end and offensive linebacker that stuffs forced inside the 25. And it'll be first down for Arcadia. Not quite at the positioning they want, but Bobby, here they go again. And of course, with that Coconino score, you, like Michael was saying, you do have to come out of there with points against this Arcadia high-powered offense. But Ray Brown will definitely, I mean, just feed Brady Force on this play, maybe get some RPOs with Rooney in there, get some rollouts, and throw it down the field. Because that last drive, short drive, but very powerful drive by that Arcadia. First down, empty backfield, three receivers on the left, two on the right. Rooney takes the snap, looks to his right, throwing it deep, looking for Force, and just over the head of Brady Force. He got a hand on it, but wasn't able to grab him. It'll be second down. Good coverage there from Noble and from number 13, Cole Hageman. Staying with Force there, not allowing him to have that room to be able to settle and make the catch. And great coverage there by the Panthers defense, of course, like you said, Cole Hageman. That's a tough throw to make, but they were able to stick with force there the entire time to force a very tough throw. Second down, empty backfield once again for Braden Rooney. Braylon Rooney, I apologize for that. Takes the end around. And that is gonna be snuffed out by the Coconino Panthers. Coconino snuffing that out, and it'll be third down and long here. And there's Prayer Young Blackcoat again. Swarms the ball carrier. Excellent closes. Yeah, Prayer Young Blackout, the 6'4", 210-pound senior, just making plays everywhere on the field tonight as the Panthers defense was able to swarm right there to make a big stop. Eight tackles coming into this game. Already has a few tonight. Third down and 10. Braylon Rooney gets a snap, looks to his left, looks to his right, and he overthrows Forrest again, and it will be fourth down. So after an explosive start to the game, Titans go nowhere, and they will punt. And not at all the best drive there for the Titans. One of the least productive ones we've seen from, all, from them all season, going three and out. This Titans offense does not do that often, and Ray Brown cannot be happy with that right there, but time for the... Titans even to make a big stop, which they have been doing a lot this season. Arcadia is going to punt from their 10-yard line. Coconino punt returner at the 42, and they're bringing pressure, and that punt will drop at about the... Oh, and it takes an Arcadia bounce. And that will drop at looks like the 40. So great field position for the Coconino Panthers offense. And for as great of a kicker as Garrett Heil it was, that punt was maybe had maybe the pressure got to him a little bit. It looked a little looked a little off-putting. Didn't go probably as far as he wanted it to, and it gives Coconino great field position. 
Bob's lucky that punt didn't get blocked either. Coconino got good interior pressure there. Took an Arcadia bounce. Well, and that was Bridger French. We saw he was rushing him, and he was close. Maybe about a half second later, and that punt was blocked. Speaking of French, he lines up in the backfield with Colton Buckingham. First down and 10 from the Coconino 40. 6.59 to go here in the first quarter, 7-3 Arcadia. Colton takes a snap, fakes the pitch. He's going to take it himself for a hard fought three yards. He was tackled there by number 16, Elijah Moore, the senior... Sorry, that was number 16, Pablo Havalera. And it'll be second and seven here. Yeah, I mean, and for this Panthers offense, you're going to see a lot of those option plays with Buckingham and French there. A lot of options, a lot of more power option than read option that we'll see from them. But it'll be those two guys for pretty much the majority of the game. Well, an official's force. A defensive lineman off the field. They had to make a quick change. Entering the game was Jaden Baia for Arcadia. And they reset the play clock. 25 seconds, second down here. Buckingham and shotgun once again. Takes the snap. Quick toss and it's low. It was caught. And they say now that it did hit the ground, so it'll be third down. Low pass by Buckingham. And third down and long once again. And something that to keep an eye out on this game, this is Colton Buckingham's first high school start. Was hurt week one, came in midway through the pacing game last week. So he's going to have a bit of a learning curve as the season goes on, as this game goes on. And this is a tough first opponent. Doesn't get tougher than that for the Coconino schedule this year. Taking on an undefeated Arcadia team. Defensive line motion right before the snap. Big third down here. Buckingham fakes the toss, throws it up the middle, and it is nearly intercepted. It was right in the hands of Carter Pruitt. It was literally, it seemed like it was thrown right to him. And that was a not the ideal play that you wanted for Coconino on third down there. It was a quick toss, and they are, they are now going to punt here. So back-to-back -back stale drives for either team. And Buckingham got that throw off really quick, but kind of a bang-bang play there for Carter Pruitt, who we're going to see a lot on the offensive and de defensive side. But tough play, kind of bang-bang. You expect that ball to be caught, but it's a little bit underthrown. Punt goes short of Chris Hoos, who is there to receive it, and it'll drop at the 25-yard line. And a couple of quick drives by either team, and coming back onto the field is the Arcadia Titans. And we were just talking about how their drive kind of went nowhere. Bobby, how do you respond for that? Yeah, I mean, for Arcadia, just move the chains a little bit. I mean, of course, they went three and out on that last drive. But get force in there, get some outside runs early in the drive because that's what they were able to do on their big touchdown drive with, I mean, pretty much just that one play. But getting force on the outside and giving that burst of speed for them to just take it, take it far. Force lines up. Next to Rooney, first down and 10. Rooney takes the snap. He's going to take it himself. Finds a little bit of daylight. Makes a move to about the 35. And of course, with Rooney early in the season, he talked about using his legs a lot more. We haven't really seen a lot of designed runs for Braille and Rooney so far this season. But a nice read option there as he's able to take that for a first down. Or, excuse me, for a second and one. He was tackled there by Hunter Navarro. The senior, second down and one. Arcadia breaks out of the huddle. Forced in the backfield with Rooney. One receiver on each side. Rooney in shotgun, takes a snap, immediately looks to his left, looks to his right. He's got Alba, he catches the ball, but he is out of bounds, so it'll be third down. He was defended really well there by number 24. That was Angelo Baca, who also plays wide receiver as well as corner, and it'll be third down and one. So Rooney tried to look downfield once again. He had the target, but he was just a little too far out of bounds. And Rooney's been texting his arm a lot this game, just trying to take some deep shots down the field, of course, with that touchdown in the corner of the end zone. But a lot of deep shots from pretty much around their own 30, 40 yard line that they've been trying a lot so far this game. That's good 
coverage too. Buck is a three-year varsity player. Here on third down, the handoff. And it is going to be close. And it, because it's a, on the play before, a second and one, that gives you a chance to a, take a shot down the field. That's why I like that play call there by Rooney and Ray Brown in the Titans offense, just to allow you to get an easy third and one run up the middle. Well, they got the first down. First and 10, two receivers on the right, one on the left, forced in the backfield. 4.43 to go here in the first quarter. Rooney takes the snap, quick toss. A tough catch made. That was Alex Alba, the senior. Had multiple defenders on him. Was able to make the grab for a gain of what looks like about eight yards. So it looks like it's going to be second down and two. Quick pass by Rooney, and that was really well defended, but it was just a great catch by Alba. Something Arcadia does best, the quick passing game. Just work to perfection. And for Alex Alba, we saw a little bit more from last week than we have earlier in the season. Seen him more on the field, but great route by him there to get a big gain or a solid gain on first down. Second down and two here. Eye formation for the Arcadia Titans. Fake handoff. Rooney rolls to his right. Throws it a little too far outside, looking for Alba again, and that will be incomplete. So it'll be another third down and short for the Titans. Michael, how, if you're Coconino, how do you get ready to stop them right here? Well, it, they've done a good job at limiting the explosiveness from Arcadia. They've been beat a couple times, but so far they've done well at keeping the ball in front of them, keeping their big plays in front of them. And I don't say I don't want to say sell out for the run here because Arcadia can do either, but you got to think that they've had success handing it off the force just right up the gut. I formation once again. He's going to fake the handoff, the toss, and that is an easy first down and more. Big tackle at about the 47 yard line. That was Noble Young Blacko with the tackle, but it was Chris Hoos who took the jet sweep up the left side. Remember, they tried that with Hoos last drive and was sniffed out immediately. Went the other side. I don't think they're respecting that, especially with the I formation. First down for Arcadia. They're going to take their time here, let the clock run a little bit, regain them composure, and keep moving the ball. And just really good play call there by the Titans offense and Ray Brown. Getting the misdirection there, that looked like it fooled the Panthers defense there, but getting the misdirection and taking around the outside to the left was a great big game. First down and 10. Three receivers on the right, one on the left. Rooney takes a snap himself, and it looked like he bobbled it a little bit, was able to pick up three or four there, and... We talk about how Arcadia has many weapons. Rooney, not only is he throwing it through the air, but he's also a strong asset on the ground as well. And for that play there, I mean, it was either just a bobble snap that he just decided to improv on right away and just take that, or that was a design run, couldn't really tell. But either way, Rooney, just a lot more designed runs for him this game. We barely saw that earlier this season, just a lot of him rolling outside and taking it for a gain. But more designed runs for Rooney so far. And that was something that Braylon Rooney wanted to focus on is we heard that at St. Mary's is getting rushing yards. Yeah, you're right, a lot more design runs for that. Rooney takes a snap. He's going up his left side. And once again, just a little too far on the pass. That was for Jeremy Smith who caught the touchdown pass earlier on in this game. And we've seen that about three or four times now from Rooney just overthrowing his receivers. And after that play, he did not look happy with himself. Rather disappointed, but... Yeah, Rooney has been taking those shots down the field, and the Panthers' defense is kind of letting him do it, just making him make the big throw, which he, like you said, has been overthrowing, that we have seen him make a lot of throws like that, like that this year. Third down here. Rooney went back to the sideline to talk to his coach to think about the play. Once again, for the third time this drive, Arcadia has third down and short. This time it's third and five. Multiple players in the backfield for Rooney. He's going to hand it off to Force. Force trying to get it to the outside, and he does. Gets to about the 27-yard line. And another first down conversion for Arcadia, keeping this drive alive. And just a huge hit that Force delivered there on Noble Young Blocka right there. It looked like at first that they might have had him. And it looks like we have a player on the field here. We're going to be right back with a quick break. 
Hello, my name is Ella Walter Sanchez, and I'm so excited to be a fall 2023 varsity sports intern. I'm currently a senior at Arcadia High School and host the morning news. My dream is to be a sideline reporter for an MLB team. I'll be hosting the Scottsdale Sports Report. See you then. Hey everyone, I'm Bobby Murphy, and I'm a senior in the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications. I've been a digital reporter and photographer in the past, and I'm excited to join Varsity Sports Show as a play-by-play -play announcer and color commentator. Hey everyone, my name is Jason Goldie from the Varsity Sports Show. I love sports and fell in love with sports broadcasting back in high school. I can't wait to bring you my unique perspective because I am on the autism spectrum. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. And we are back. We had an injured Arcadia Titan down on the field. That was number 61, Jaden Baia, back on the sidelines now. First down and 10, 2.58 to go here in the first quarter. Once again, that I formation, handing it up the middle. Taking it was Joe Hoos. Picking up a few there, it'll be second down. Looks like he picked up about three on the play. And it looks like they're gonna say it was a gain of two. Second down. And we've seen this quarter, Katie's really using a lot of options on the ground. Yeah, and with Brady Force, that play before we went to the break, great hit by him there. And just big burst of speed on the outside that we've been talking about a lot. But it looked like they might have had him on the inside first, but he just had that big speed burst on the outside. Second down and eight here. 2.20 to go here in the first quarter. Arcadia going back to that eye formation. We have a whistle here. And I believe Arcadia has called a timeout. And Ray Brown decided that he wanted to have another talk with his team, figure out something else. Having a lot of success, though. Notice on, the, on that play to force earlier in the drive, on that option play, on that reverse, having a lot of success going to the left. Not all of the success, but they're, they're, they must have found something in Coconino's scheme because. They continually went back to the left side. They're having success each time. Well, it seems like whoever, it seems like only Brady Force is really getting anywhere on the right side. But with that happening, like Coconino, it's a guessing game at that point. They don't really know where the ball's going to go. And Arcadia, this drive, after we saw, they, they tried throwing it last time. It wasn't really working for them. And so far we've seen this game, Arcadia's really had the most success on the ground as Braden really is just kind of overthrowing his receivers right now, and the ground game's working. And the O-line has been blocking great, allowing Force to get those outside runs. Second down here as both teams line up. Rooney in shotgun, takes the snap, hands it off to Force, who cuts to the right side. Gets to about the 20 to the 19. And even on a short run there like that by Force, He's able to just shift so quick, just tiny cuts on the field that he's able to just turn like a two, pretty much about a one or a two yard gain into a bigger gain. It'll be third down and short once again for the fourth time this drive. Arcadia, long extended drives here. It's about four, coming up on four or five minutes now for this drive. Gotta wonder if that Coconino defense is tired, Michael. They've been on the field a lot and that's certainly a possibility. They've been long drives for Arcadia too. They've been long and winding ones. Well, it's certainly been one that's dragged on. Coconino's going to try to get off the field here. That goes without saying, but you know, well, and, a little bit of hands on hips, yeah. And, and we've seen Arcadia can really, like, tire you out or be quick, as we saw earlier. The handoff once again to Force. He's got a lot of room, and he takes a big hit, but he lands inside the five. That was Angelo Baca with the touchdown saving tackle, but it's first down and goal for Arcadia, and really, the player of the game so far has been Brady Force. He really has not had any problems getting up the field, cutting through that Panthers defense. Yeah, and for this offense, just another kind of, just not really misdirection, but kind of 
Just a fake handoff, giving it to Force to come the other way. Again, Force coming right, the outside tackle and guard four on the right side for Arcadia has been looking really good this tonight. First down and goal here, 51 seconds to go. Under center, oh, and he fumbles the ball. He fell on the play, was able to get it back. A little bit of miscommunication. Rooney was not too happy about that, and they lost some yardage there. Looks like it'll be second and goal from the 10. Michael, what happened there? Well, and, and it looked, uh, there was a lot going on. I almost thought he fumbled the ball for a second. He was, must have tripped over one of the runners. I thought it was going to be a quick handoff to... It looked like who's I thought he was going to give it off to, but once again, miscommunication. He's going to go for the pass, and it is just over the head of Pruitt. He was able to get a hand on it, but not enough. Defended well there by Noble Young Blackout once again, Michael. Just continuing great coverage by Noble Young Blackout. He plays really, really well. Matching up with, with what is an excellent Arcadia receiver. And this Panthers secondary has looked really good tonight, but those are throws that Rooney likes a lot in the red zone. Those shots, in kind of just those medium touch passes, 10 to 15 yards into the back of the end zone that we've seen him make a lot of times so far this season. Well, it'll be third down and goal here. This looks like this will be the last play of the quarter. Four seconds left. Got to wonder what Ray Brown has cooked up for this Arcadia offense. He has Force next to him on the left. He's got Smith and Alba on the outside. It looks like he's going to the corner, and it is caught for a touchdown. It was Alex Alba who made the grab right at the end of the quarter. Braylon Rooney's second touchdown pass of the game, the exact same one as before. That left corner has been really good for Arcadia so far. And for Rooney, like we were saying, those Fades into the back of the end zone, into the corner that he loves to throw in the red zone. First one with Jeremy Smith, second one with Alex Alba. Beautiful pass by him there as he just, again, dropped it in a bucket. That was somehow better than the first throw. Garrett Kyle for the extra point here to extend the Arcadia lead. The kick is up, and it is good. 14-3 for Arcadia. We'll be right back. We are going to see... A quick interview that we recorded prior to the start of this game. I'm Michael Manny here with Coconino Panthers head coach Gary Cook and coach 2-0 on the year coming into a big test in Arcadia. Haven't allowed a touchdown all year and also have been good on run defense. Arcadia has a balanced front. How do you slow it down? Well, it is a big test for us and I think one of the biggest things is we're likely to get scored on. Well, one of the things is how well do our guys respond to that. We've talked a great deal about it. You know, they're very good offense. They're liable to score. So we got to respond to that when it happens and, and, you know, punch back, as we say. Colton Buckingham made his uh, debut at quarterback last week. What did you like about his performance at Pace? Well, he threw the ball really, really well. And, uh, you know, we're now at a point where we're kind of going to run two different offenses because I've got two very effective QBs. And we've played without him for the scrimmage in game one, so it was great to have him back. He played well that night. Coach, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. And we are back here, start of the second quarter. Arcadia about to kick off to Coconino. Michael, what do the Panthers have to do? They are in unfamiliar territory right now. It is unfamiliar territory this season, but they've been here as a team before. And the thing is, is that I don't want to overrate something at this point in the game, just the start of the second quarter, but. It's a very important drive for the Panthers. You gotta go down and make something happen here. Kickoff return by Cole Hageman. Gets past the 20 yard line and not much further, so. First down here for Arcadia, or excuse me, for Coconino. First and 10 from the 22. Coconino's got some work to do. 
down by 11 here. They had only given up three points the entire season up until this point. They have now given up 14 in one quarter. But as we were just talking about, Michael, they have been there before collectively as a team. This is an older group. The quick toss to the outside to French, and he picks up a couple before he goes out of bounds. And it looks like he actually caught a, picked up a little bit more than I previously thought. I believe he got to about the 30, 31 yard line, so it will be second and short. And Michael, we were talking about how Coconino is mainly a run heavy team, but it looks like they've been passing the ball a lot more. Yeah, like I mentioned, they're All developing the a bit of a, a quick passing game that they really hadn't had in the last few seasons under former head coach Mike Lapsley. They were a run heavy team, and that is still what they are now, but just developing that little bit of a passing game that, make, that sets up the run game and makes it that much more dangerous. Second and three here. Buckingham was thinking about the pitch. He was going to take it himself, and the ball is loose, and I believe the Titans have it. There are several Arcadia defensive players that are calling for it, and it is. It is recovered by who else but Carter Pruitt, the heart and soul of this Arcadia defense, who has come up big on the defensive end many times for the Titans. A huge hit, knocked the ball out of the hands of Buckingham, and that is not what you wanted if you're Coconino, Michael. No, and I mentioned earlier that Coconino had to make something happen on this drive. You don't want to fall down by three scores, and now they're in danger of doing that right here. They need to stop in the worst way. Bobby, that couldn't have been much better for Arcadia's defense if you wanted to get that stop there after getting the stop last time as well. And for Carter Pruitt, earlier in the season, we were talking about him a lot more on the offensive side. These last few games, defense, he has been a force. First down here from the 38. Rooney looked like he was going to pass. He's going to take it himself. Evades a defender. Getting a lot of room. Takes the hit at about the 17-yard line. A big gain from Braylon Rooney, who has really stepped up here the last couple of drives here after kind of a shaky start. First down, Arcadia. He's going to have a quick talk with his coach. Figure out what to do here. Maybe slow it down after that run. And Arcadia is really rolling here on offense. And for Rooney, I mean, of course, that looked like it was actually going to be a pass play, but Rooney was able to just take that up the middle kind of to the left. But great run by him to improvise on that play there. Being the dual threat quarterback that he is will do that as he can throw the ball, he can run the ball. You never really know what you're going to do as we have a whistle here. And it looks like the officials are going to send an Arcadia player off the field. Looks like they're sending Havalera off and get a quick pad change there. Alex Alba enters the field on the right side, but they're going to hand it off to Forrest, who's tackled by about three or four Coconino defenders, but still was able to pick up about six or seven there on the carries, and it'll be second down and short. And for Forrest there, I mean, just a quick run up the middle. Not even that big of a run, but a five-yard run where he, he can just run up the middle on a first down like that and just make a second down in the red zone just a little bit shorter is a huge play. The ground and pound game can prove to be a very effective strategy for any team. We know that Arcadia can do that. They did that last drive leading up to the previous touchdown. Michael, what response does Coconino have to bring here? They just need to get a stop any way they can. The pitch to Forced again. Looks like Coconino players are right on him. Gets to the outside. And he's hit out of bounds. And sounded like a few of the Arcadia fans wanted a late hit. They're not going to get it. It was right near the 10-yard line. It looks like it's going to be third down and about three or four to go. Coming back onto the field is Ian Slater for Arcadia. Braylon Rooney heading back to the huddle. And that's a good job there by the Coconino secondary. Forcing Forrest to bounce to the outside. It's still that much difficult to get him out of bounds there. That seems to be a common theme for Brady Forrest. Hard to tackle. And they're actually going to say it's third and three here for the Titans. And another whistle. Timeout and a timeout for Arcadia. Arcadia. That's their second of the half. Ray Brown did not like what he was seeing. And they're going to talk it over here. And... Bobby, if you're Arcadia, third down and short, once again, deep in Coconino territory, what do you think they're going to run here? What, they, what their bread and butter 
in the red zone so far this season, especially on a third and three. You could definitely just hand it off to Forrest, take it to the outside a little bit, but I think that Ray Brown's going to cook up kind of just a play-action rollout, play-action boot kind of for Rooney. Well, and we know that Arcadia is not afraid of that play action. We saw it on that opening touchdown. It was the fake handoff to Forrest for the touchdown grab by Grant. But yeah, like we said, we don't really know what Arcadia is going to run here. And, Michael, what are you expecting if you're the Coconino defense? You, could, you have to be ready for anything because you just mentioned it. Arcadia has done a great job executing that play action all season. We've seen that a bunch of times. But at third and short, they can hand it to Brady Force. Remember, they threw, they did that reverse here on the other side of the field. You have to look out for some trickery or something like that, too. That's not out of the realm of possibility. Third down here and short. Arcadia lines up. Three on the left, one on the right. Looks like they have Carter Pruitt there in the slot. And a flag. And might have been motion on the line of scrimmage. And yes, and it is on Coconino. So the Panthers gift Arcadia first down. And Michael, we talked about those errors that the Coconino doing to themselves once again happening in a critical scenario. And that, yeah, that's just another unforced error there. First down and goal. Bobby, you might be right. They might just be going right back to their bread and butter. Brady forced to punch it in. And for Arcadia, going up three scores against a team like this who we really thought was going to be a good, really tough matchup, they can get this touchdown here. Oh, and we see here Brady, Braylon Rooney. They hand it off to Force direct snap, and he's going to punch it in. He was met with contact right at the goal line. But Brady Force, who took the direct snap, muscles his way in. And Arcadia, we talked about how big it would be to go up three scores. They punch it in. Brady Force, his, his first time, his name's been called in the end zone. Exactly what they wanted. And of course, that penalty on the Panthers is just killer to a is just killer to the on the excuse me to the defense there. But the wildcat formation with Rooney on the outside to the left, and then Forrest, who just even on a five yard run like that, just br run, throwing himself into the end zone, huge speed burst, and he just looked great on that run, really quick. And that kick is good by Garrett Kyle. That nearly went over the goalpost on the extra point. We were talking about how strong of a kicker he is. Proving to be effective here at the extra point. And Michael, it is 21 to 3. We never thought we would be saying that in this game. We thought it'd be a little bit closer than that. The Panthers offense hasn't really been able to get going. They they had that drive, that first and goal, not really able to get what they wanted. They're is it panic time? It's not panic time, but it is time to put some put a touchdown on the board. Falling down three scores to a team of a, of a caliber like Arcadia is a challenge because that offense can score at will on the other side there. You have to choose some time off the clock, keep them off the field here. And like I mentioned, Colton Buckingham, this is his first start. So he's got a lot to learn against a good defense. The running game is, uh, is all good and fine and it is Coconino's best weapon on offense. But you have to, but when they stack the box, you have to get something going in the passing game. Well, we know that Coconino can be explosive on offense. They have been averaging uh, 46 points a game up until this point. So far, they have only a field goal as the kick is taken back to the 25 to the 30. That's French. He's up to the 40. Good return there up to the 49, and that is exactly if you wanted, if you are Bridger French and the Coconino team, you needed a spark like that, and that good return of about 45, 46 yards is exactly what you needed, Michael. That is exactly the spark the Panthers needed, exactly what the doctor ordered, great field position. Now what do the Panthers do with it? And for this Titans defense, I mean, they're, they have been looking really good on the defensive side so far, of course, only allowing that field goal from about the three to five yard line, but for the defense to strive, I expect Buckingham, I mean, for the offense, I expect Buckingham to throw it a little bit more. Of course, they're going to run with French a lot, but Buckingham might want to try more, might try a little bit more RPOs just to get the defense guessing. 
Well, and Michael, do you even maybe bring in Bridger French himself at quarterback here to just try and get something? We know that they, they, they've had a little bit of success against this Arcadia defense, and uh, we see it there. That's what they're doing right now. And they had, they had French at quarterback. We were just talking about how maybe to change something up, Bridger French has really been the best player on the field for Coconino right now. But Gary Cook did not like what he saw, wanted a little bit more time to talk it out. They used their first time out of the game. 9.21 left here in the second quarter. And Bobby, talk, talk to us about that last play. How good was it for Arcadia? Hey, that last play, I mean, just the run right up the middle, of course, with Forrest able to extend the lead to 21-3. to Their scoring has really been all around today. For one of the only times this season that it's been, of course it's been a lot of Rooney, it's been a lot of Forrest, but it's been everyone's scoring for them so far. They've had Jeremy Smith catch the, the first touchdown, Alex Alvo with the second, and then of course Forrest running that in for the third touchdown. Just an all-around offensive game from the Titans. Bridger French lines up at quarterback. Buckingham's on the left side. First down and 10 here. From the Arcadia 48, Bridger takes the snap. He's going to take it himself. Met with contact immediately. Picks up a couple when he really should have been stopped right at the line of scrimmage. And he picked up about three yards, four yards. And it'll be second down. And that's the threat of having Bridger friends line up at quarterback. He has two passing touchdowns on the year. Not a natural quarterback but he can throw the ball or run it up the gut like that, and that's the danger of that RPO. Well, and I was seeing him during warm-ups. You are absolutely right. He can throw the ball. Doesn't do it often. He's only thrown the ball 10 times this season in the games that he's played. But like we were just talking about, Coconino desperately needs something. He's going to take the handoff himself. Easily gets the first down at about the 38-yard line of Arcadia. And... Like we were saying, it is the Bridger French show for Coconino's offense. He's kind of doing everything right now. Yeah, he's and he's a guy that can do, as many of the Panthers on this roster are, that can do a lot of things and do a lot of things well. But it's not just Bridger. Coconino has a stable of running backs, and I'm sure we'll see here coming up. But it's working right now. Buckingham split out to the right this time. Well, one name that we haven't called yet is Hayden Mickelson, who has taken – a lot of the majority of the running back snaps as French takes it himself, cuts to the right after he was heading to the outside. He was able to pick up about five or six there. And Bobby limiting that Coconino offense to really just French has got to be really helpful. Yeah, and of course, even on a drive like this where it's really just French, you're able to just predict what's happening. Of course, he's not an easy guy to tackle at 5'11", 180, but Stacking the box against them doesn't always work, but they are able to just predict run most of the time. Looks like Arcadia's going to rush six there. French takes the snap himself again, muscles his way to the 25, and I believe he has enough there for the first down on second and short. And Michael, they are doing exactly what we said they needed to do here. And you can't say enough about what the job Coconino's offensive line is doing, opening up these gaping holes for French to go through on this drive. They've been excellent. This has been their best drive of the game. Well, and Bobby, if you're Arcadia, you've got to clean that up because as Michael just mentioned, he's getting at least three, four, five yards of steam building up before he's even met with contact this drive. And he is kind of throwing in a fake left for run up the middle that could be psyching out that defense a little bit. That is the threat that you pose when you are a dual threat player. Going to take it himself. He's going to hand it off. That was to Cole Hageman, staying on his feet down to about the 12-yard line. And Coconino's cooking now. Cole Hageman met with contact, fought through it, able to pick up some more yards. First down again for Coconino. And just, it's literally like we willed it. It's like we almost manifested it, huh, Michael? Yeah, that's exactly it. And Coconino almost looking like Army-Navy here with the pitches, with the counters, with the option plays. It, the RPOs, they're utilizing that run game in a variety of different ways and doing it really well on this drive. First down and 10 here from the 11 or 12 yard line. French takes it off again. Met with contact immediately, not able to get the tackle. They do now. Met with a, by a few Arcadia players. That was John Coulter, the senior, who got the tackle 
and that was really the first good defensive play Arcadia has made, stopping French where he was. And that was what we were talking about, Bobby, getting that first contact but not being able to tackle him. And uh, on a lot of these last few plays, it's all been like four to six yard runs where they've just, where he's just been able to tire out that defense. But Coulter getting through on that one and able to get him down pretty much before any contact. Cole Hageman heading off the field, Buckingham back on the field, and he he's going to take the snap here. French goes back to that running back position, 544 to go here in the second quarter. 21-3 Arcadia Titans, but Coconino is knocking on the door. Quick toss to the outside for French, met with contact. Good hit there by Carter Pruitt, and he was only able to pick up maybe one or two, and it's third and long here for Coconino. We saw this earlier, Manny. They are inside Arcadia territory. They were stopped a few times, and then they were really ended up only having to kick that field goal. So what do you do differently here? I, you don't want to – that's the thing is that they were they were in the red zone first time, got stalled, and had to kick the field goal. It might be time to go to the back of the playbook. Something saved for a time like this, third and long, and a field goal is nice here, but down three scores, you really need a touchdown if you're Coconino. Exactly right there. Buckingham going to take the snap again. Third down and nine. They can get a first down. They can get a reset of downs. Quick toss again. And he is going to be stopped short. That was Asher Young who completed the catch. Met there by a few Titans. And we have a Coconino player on the, down, or player on the field down. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Ella Walter Sanchez, and I'm so excited to be a fall 2023 varsity sports intern. I'm currently a senior at Arcadia High School and host the morning news. My dream is to be a sideline reporter for an MLB team. I'll be hosting the Scottsdale Sports Report. See you then. And we are back here. Fourth down and four. Michael, you are right. Coconino in desperation mode here. They need something. They're going to go for it. And maybe not, they're gonna talk about it. Second time out of the game by Coconino. And Michael coming out of this timeout, are you still gonna go for it or do you just take your points once again? Taking the points is nice, but in the grand scheme of things, what's the difference between 21-3 and 21-6? You need six here. Having six is nice, but getting the but getting the touchdown here, down three scores. It's not desperation time yet, but going into the half, you really need to get six on the board. Well, and, and you're right, and, and Bobby, as we've seen, Arcadia scoring on back-to-back -back drives. I mean, if you're the Arcadia Titans, yeah, you'll take a field goal because you know that you're still up by two scores and you get the ball back with plenty of time. And after the drive, after the long, just punching down the middle drive that the Panthers have run here, Arcadia getting out of this with zero points would be huge, of course, and would just be killer to the Coconino offense and the team in general. Bridger French having one last word with Gary Cook. Looks like that offense will be staying on the field for fourth down here. 4-10 to go in the second quarter. This is a big play for Coconino. They need this touchdown to stay in this game after Arcadia's offense has really had their way with Coconino for majority of this second quarter. Fourth down here, Bridger French is going to take the snap. Maybe try and catch Arcadia offside, and they might have. Bridger French takes the handoff, and they say he was down at the one. He did get the first down regardless, but I believe this one might be on Arcadia, so they are going to stay on the field. We'll figure out officially in a second. And Michael, we never really consider that, maybe trying to go Arcadia into an automatic first down as Arcadia did to them last drive. Oh no, it's on Coconino. It was a false start and that's the exact opposite of what you want. It's now you're going backwards. Once again, what are we what's been the theme of this game for Coconino, Michael? And there it is again. That's that's a mental error. That's an avoidable mental error if you're Coconino. Now it looks like they're going to kick it. Well, now you absolutely have to because you are back at your own 10 in another forced error. We saw that last drive. We saw that on that offensive drive that forced them to kick the field goal the first time. They're just, they're doing it to themselves right now. And Arcadia's gonna get the ball back. Jose McGill Villanueva for the kick, a high one, and it is good. So 
Bobby, you got to be happy with that. You, you take the points. It's 21 6. You got 3.53 to go to do what you want. You can't really be much more happier than that. And of course, that does bring it down to a two touchdown game instead of three. But overall, like I was saying earlier, for, the, for Arcadia, after allowing a long drive, just running the ball down the field the entire drive and coming out of it out of it with only three points for Coconino, Ray Brown has to be really happy with how his defense played in the red zone there. And it's 21 to 6 here. There's, there's almost four minutes, under four minutes left to go here. Arcadia's got plenty of time to go down and score again. So, Bobby, you're right. If you're Ray Brown, you have to be thrilled just allowing the three there after a bruising drive like that. And for Ray Brown and the Titans offense, I mean, Rooney has looked amazing so far this game. They've been moving the ball really well. And the deep shots, Rooney hasn't had looking great so far this game, but he has been able to lead this offense to 21 first half points, of course. And with just under four minutes left, they could have obviously just run the ball with force a lot of the drive, but I think that Rooney is going to want to take some shots here again. Well, and at the very worst, if you're Arcadia, you just run this clock down to halftime, up 15. Speaking of force, he takes the kickoff, met with a big hit. He is stuffed short at about the 24-yard line. And we're looking to see here who made the tackle. I believe that was Derek Jimenez, the junior for Coconino. Met Brady Force with a hard contact. And we've seen some big hits this game, fellas. Yeah, both both sides have been hitting really hard so far. And hitting, even on offense, we saw, we've saw we seen Force to deliver a few big hits running the ball. But for this offense, I mean, just under four minutes left, one time out. Pro I, I think they're probably going to start off with the Force run or two, see if he can get any big plays going. First down and 10 here. Ball on the 24-yard line. Bobby, as you mentioned, forces in the backfield with Rooney. Rooney in shotgun formation, takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Rooney. He's going for the pass, and it's caught by Carter Pruitt. Started a turn up field. He's tackled at about the 38-yard line, and it is a first down for Arcadia. Well, we were talking, you were talking before the kickoff about Rooney starting to take some shots. That's got to be a confidence booster. And even just like sort of a medium pass there, he really that was, just looks like his pure arm strength there across the body, throwing to the corner on a route like that where you can't throw behind him or, it, of course, will be incomplete or picked off. Great throw there by Rooney to prove it. First down and 10 here for the Arcadia Titans. Rooney, as he has been most of this game, in shotgun formation with Forrest behind him. Two, two Titans on the right, handoff to Forrest. Up the middle, met by a couple of Panthers. He is able to pick up about five or six in a late flag. Maybe something was said there. We're going to find out in a second. And officials talking it over right now. We'll find out in just a second who it was. I believe it might have been. Yeah, I think it's on Coconino. And a personal foul call on Coconino is going to move it up 15. Michael, I feel like I'm repeating myself every time I bring this up to you. Wants to get another unforced error by the Panthers. And that's it, a personal foul. There were, the Panthers had a few of them in the, the first half of their game last week. And that's something over the summer, in his first summer with the program, Gary Cook preached to, you know, avoid those personal fouls. Those are... I mean, just like false starts, just like holdings, those are avoidable. And there's been, there's been, I believe, two of those already in the first half. Just absolute momentum killers giving the Titans free yards. I mean, we can almost say they gave him a touchdown last drive. Forrest fakes the, or Rooney fakes the handoff. He's going to take it himself. Wasn't really going anywhere. He was met right away by Villanueva, who was also kicking for the Panthers, and he maybe picked up one there. So it'll be second down, 3.08 to go. Bobby, that's a smart play. He's not going to take a hit there. He's their quarterback. And he's also not looking to just force the ball down the field, of course. That looks more of like a read option there. But in just over a minute, this Arcadia offense, of course, with that personal foul penalty, but able to move the ball all the way down the field with not that many plays, but that will allow Arcadia just to get more, excuse me, get more time, three minutes left in the half to score on this drive. Sec second down here. They're actually going to say he picked up two, so second and eight. Under center, rolls to the right. He's looking for someone. Throws and is caught. Takes a hit right away. And that was number 17, Ian Slater, getting open for Rooney, kind of like a makeshift play. 
he was being hassled by Ethan Jeffs on Rooney's pursuit, but was unable to catch him before he was able to make the throw, and that's the first time we've heard Ian Slater tonight. And, I mean, that coverage on the field earlier in the play, Rooney was looking down and wasn't able to force a pass down the field due to this coverage. Uh-oh. And another flag, and I think you know who I'm going to talk to here. Michael, <laughs> what, what is going on here if you're a Coconino? It's and one after another. Arcadia's doing a good job moving the ball on that drive, but the, I mean, there's not much more to say. There's, this is not an offense you want to give free yards to, and they've been, and they've been doing it throughout this first half. Well, and we've seen a couple of times. It's almost like Coconino was bailed out. Arcadium maybe coming off of a bad play, a flag after, like, oh, okay, I'll take the free yards, and first and five here from the. Th 25 yard line for Acadia. Rooney, ball over his head, picks it up. He's going to run it. He's going to take something out of nothing, hit out of bounds. And I mean, if you're Arcadia, Bobby, you're just happy you got something out of nothing because that could have been very disastrous. Yeah, and we've seen Rooney do that a lot this year, just turn in a lot of lost plays into a gain of yards, even if it's not huge. But before that play, we were talking about the, panel, the mistakes by the Panthers, and one of the Arcadia's strengths is taking other teams' mistakes and turn it into something and just capitalizing on those, and that's one of Arcadia's strengths, and they're able to do it really well. Well, Rooney lost the ball to about the 32, was able to bring it back for a net gain of three yards, so it'll be second down and two here. Rooney and shotgun again with force behind him. Looks to pass. Ball is up for Grant, and it is! It's bad for it, and he caught it! He out-muscles the defender. That was JT Begay, who was fighting with Grant, a battle of the ones. And it looks like that was a Moss play there. Touchdown, that is the third passing touchdown of the game for Braylon Rooney. To that left side again, Bobby, that play has been working to perfection time and time again this game. And we see Forrest on the sideline topping his head, saying on your head there. But like he's an absolute moss there, great catch, Jeremy Smith, with his second touchdown of the game. And ball was a little bit underthrown by Rooney. However, Jeremy Sm Smith was able to turn that into a touchdown. Smith. Jeremy Smith went up and got it, too. That, Bobby, you mentioned that that was kind of moss. That was a moss scenario because... He and JT Begay were fighting for that one. He went up and got it. That's an excellent play by Jeremy Smith. Well, and Michael, that's got to be really disheartening if you're the Coconino Panthers because it looked like for a split second that Begay had won that, but Grant at the last second just muscling it away from him, literally took the football away from him and added seven more for the Titans, who we talked about, Bobby, after taking that touchdown, or taking the points last time. Now it's even bigger of a deficit here for Coconino. Yeah, and Rooney, of course, on that drive, just with the mistakes by Coconino, he's just able to lead the, this offense and just move the ball down the field. We didn't see as much force there on that drive as we've seen the entire game. But, again, just a fade back of the end zone by Rooney. Tiny bit underthrown, but Jeremy Smith is able to turn that into a great play. Well, and, Michael, I believe I asked this last drive, it's even worse now. It's, it is it is full out. It's got to be full out desperation mode at this point. You, it is getting to that point. It's it's all, it's about DEFCON 1. Coconino has plenty of time. They need to run a two-minute drill here and get a touchdown on the board. Well, nothing better for the Panthers to go into halftime with a touchdown. But honestly, I got to say it's probably DEFCON 2 at this point, just considering the point that every time Coconino seems like they've got something, something happens late down the stretch in Arcadia territory where they are unable to register six taking it from the one that's Cole Hageman another decent return out to about the 31 yard line so Michael we just talked about a two minute drill you got two minutes 30 seconds from your own 31 yard line you're a run heavy team but you almost like have to pass the ball here it's it's at that point where Coconino is, is developing this passing attack now it's it's about time to go to work with it. They got only one timeout to deal with, too. So you have to keep that in mind, too. And in young Colton Buckingham's career, 
this is a big moment in your first start to lead a two-minute drill. The young quarterback, first big game of the year on the road in a hostile environment, takes a snap first down, met by a couple of Arcadia defenders, and he's going down. That is Owen Bowers with the sack, and that is not what you wanted if you're the Panthers. He was looking deep, but Owen Bowers went right through that offensive line, getting the first sack of the game for either team. And Coconino goes backwards when they absolutely needed to go forwards there. Michael, what happened? I mean, that's just, that's just an instance. I'm holding on to the ball too long. If you're Buckingham, and a young quarterback's going to do that, had two defenders bearing down in his face. There's just nothing quite more you can do there. Second down and very long here for the Coconino Panthers. Buckingham in trouble again. He's going to take it himself and met with a big hit. That is Camden Coyne, the massive hit on Buckingham, and he was able to pick up some, but not really a lot. And it is going to be third down and long for the Titans. Bobby. A couple of strong plays by the defensive line. And again on that play, you see Jacob Tecompe come in there, who was part of that sack in that first play. But he's able to just force Buckingham to run and move to move and run the ball there. But another big play and big hit by Arcadia's defense. Third down and 12 here for Coconino. The pitch to French. And he is going nowhere. He is met there by Coyne. Coyne again. French was still running. Thought he... Was he tackled? Maybe not. And Arcadia calls a timeout on fourth down. 57 seconds to go here in the half. Coconino, kind of a desperation drive. They really didn't get anything there, Michael. No, they didn't. And Bobby, you remember when we were when we were doing the game against Ben Franklin last week? We saw at the end of the first half, we saw Arcadia go and score again. With there was, I think, just over a minute left in that half. So. And that was Arcadia again able to capitalize on on un, unforced errors by the other or on unforced errors by Ben Franklin there. But yeah, with just under a minute left, you're going to see Arcadia run the. I mean, throw two lot of RPOs here. You're going to see Rooney take some shots down the field, maybe have some second and one, second and two, and take a deep shot down to either Smith, maybe Nick Gettner, Pruitt, and of course Alex Alba. Jackson Guerrero for the Panthers to punt it away. Ironically enough, this is the first punt for the Panthers. I don't remember them. The second punt, excuse me. I, it was the first time I remember it. It was very early on in the drive. Back to receive the kick is Jackson Crandall, I believe, for the Titans. Guerrero punts it away, booming kick. Drops at about the 34 and goes out of bounds at the 29. So not terrible field position for the Circadia offense. But Bobby, I mean, you got 50 seconds. Do you try again? Definitely. With Rooney, he can make any play happen, of course, with his talented receivers. 50 seconds, no timeouts after, of course, he's not last one after the third down. But... 50 seconds, you're going to see Rooney try to make some plays, maybe some mid shots down the field. 50 seconds, that is still enough time to take some medium shots before you have to go deep. Well, we saw last drive, Braylon Rooney getting a little bit more success through the air. First down and 10 here. They break out of the huddle. We'll see their formation here in just a second. Looks like they're going to have two on the left, two on the right, forced in the backfield. Braylon Rooney got about seven seconds left on the play clock here. He takes the snap, looks downfield, moves out of the pocket, a dart looking for Carter Pruitt who is cutting that slant across midfield and kind of right back to what we were seeing a little bit earlier, just passes that receivers are able to get a hand on, but it's a little too far out where they're able to get both. So it'll be second down and 10 here. They lost about six seconds on that play and Bobby, what do you change up here? Do you Maybe after that play, do you now kind of consider just taking it to halftime? I mean, 44 seconds, they're definitely still going to try and make some plays and get down the field. Great coverage there by Coconino to stop Pruitt from really getting more on that ball. But, yeah, no, Rooney's definitely going to try and take some more shots down the field here. One thing Coconino's defense has been consistently strong at this game, as we've seen, Rooney once again dancing around a deep ball, and it is caught! Caught at about the 48-yard line. That was Drew Smith. There was a flag in the backfield. Looks like it was a chop block on Arcadia, so it's 
going to go backwards. And that will negate about a 25 yard pass from Rooney. And that was a great catch by Drew Smith. Another one to the outside. Really the only receiver, excuse me, only him was able to get it and he did. But it's a shame for Smith because that pass did not count. And with that play, I mean, you saw three Coconino safeties back by the 50 yard line all lined up pretty much at the midfield point. And they were able to get a solid rush there, get Rooney to move out of the pocket, and he's still able to deliver a great ball. Back to the 20 here, 36 seconds left. It's gonna be second down and looks like 25. That is a long way to go. And Michael, you gotta kinda of take something out of that, right? I mean, you don't give up any more points. Obviously, you're still, you're still down a lot going into the half. Second down here, they're just gonna hand it off to Forrest here. He picks up four. Clock's gonna run. Bobby, we're gonna take it to halftime here and you gotta be really happy for Arcadia. And with the clock running down, it looks like they're just gonna let it go down to halftime, but Arcadia leads Coconino at halftime, 20 to six. Offense has looked great. Rooney with three pass touchdowns, Forrest with a rush touchdown and the defense has been just as just as strong. Michael, if you're Coconino, you all have a lot of work to do, but last year it was 21-0 Coconino, Arcadia Stormback, do you have that in the back of your mind as you start the second half? You have to, especially for the players that were on that team last year. Crazier things than happen. And back to your earlier point, there's no small victories in football, but that's a moral one is getting that stop there at the end of the drive. When you've seen Arcadia drive down with that little time, that's a moral victory. All right, it is 28-6 at halftime for Arcadia. We will be back after the break. Hello everyone, this is Kyle Cooper with Varsity Sports and I'm back again with another halftime segment. This week we are going back to the NFL. We are skipping the podium and going to a brand new segment called Dive. You might be familiar with this guy right here, NFL quarterback Brock Purdy. Some of you might not actually know this, but Brock Purdy was born here in Arizona in Queen Creek. He made his name known throughout the state back in 2015 through 2017 as the quarterback for Perry High School. Now, right after his sophomore year in high school, the AIA actually adjusted the region so Perry could be placed in the 6A Division Premier Region. The 6A region ranks as one of the toughest regions in all of the United States for high school football. During high school, Purdy competed against some top tier competition in playing Chandler, Hamilton, and Basha. You might be familiar with those schools. In the years of 2016 and 2017, Brock Purdy led Perry to the state championship back to back, but ended up losing both of those games, 65 to 28 and 48 to 42 to Chandler High School. For the 2017 to 2018 season, Brock Purdy was named the Gatorade Player of the Year. And this was the first Arizona Football Player of the Year award to go to Perry High School. Throughout high school, his stats were pretty impressive, throwing for 4,410 yards, 57 touchdowns, nine interceptions, 1,106 rushing yards, and 10 rushing touchdowns. It wasn't all positive for Brock Purdy as people overlooked him and this continued to be a theme throughout his career. ESPN and 247 Sports considered Purdy as only a three-star recruit coming out of high school. Despite this rating, Purdy committed to Iowa State University and joined Kyle Kempt and Zeb Nolan as the third string quarterback. He soon became the starter that freshman year as Kemp got injured and Nolan wasn't really producing on the field, so they gave the start to Brock Purdy. In his first season, he would finish with a career best 169.9 passer rating and he completed 146 out of 220 passes for 2,250 yards, 16 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. The Cyclones achieved four consecutive winning seasons with Purdy under center. This made it the first time the program has seen four straight winning seasons back since 1923 to 1927. Throughout college, Purdy earned a 151.1 passer rating 
throwing for 12,170 yards, 81 touchdowns, and 33 interceptions. But he still wasn't turning any heads and getting noticed. After college, he declared for the NFL Draft, and if you're an NFL fan, we all know that Brock Purdy was picked last in the 2022 draft. This is where his nickname Mr. Irrelevant came from. The 2022 to 23 season for the 49ers was a great one as they had the number one defense in the NFL and a really star-studded offense as well. After promising young quarterback Trey Lance went out with an injury in week two of the season, Jimmy Garoppolo took the job but only lasted till week 13 of the season. After Garoppolo suffered a foot injury, Brock Purdy came into the game and this is where he would make a name for himself in the NFL. Brock Purdy stepped in, completed 25 to 37 passes for 210 yards and two touchdowns. He became the first Mr. Irrelevant to throw for a touchdown pass at a regular season game. You really can't make this up. In his first career start, he bested Tom Brady in the Buccaneers. After that game, the team went on to win six games in a row and made it to the NFC Championship game. The 49ers completed their 22-23 season with a loss to the Eagles in that championship game. It didn't help either that Brock Purdy was out for most of the game with an injury and what looked like a Super Bowl winning team fell short and had to go home. Despite losing their number one and number two quarterbacks, the 49ers discovered a star in the making. The 49ers are coming off a dominant 30-7 win over the Pittsburgh Steelers. With their excellent defense, one of the best running backs in the NFL in Christian McCaffrey, star wide receivers, and Mr. Relevant, the sky is the limit for the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers will play the Los Angeles Rams this Sunday, and it will be the first time that a number one overall pick in Matthew Stafford faces off against the last pick in the draft in Brock Purdy. He went from taking Perry High School to the state championship to taking the San Francisco 49ers to the NFC championship game. It's clear that Arizona's own Brock Purdy is proving all these haters wrong. This has been your week's deep dive, and once again, I'm Kyle Cooper with Varsity Sports, and enjoy the second half. The NFL season is back, so let's take a look at some of the top plays from week one, starting with the hometown Arizona Cardinals against the Washington Commanders. How about the defense of the Cardinals coming up with this fumble six, returning it to the house for a touchdown? The Cardinals defense looked good, but they unfortunately lose a close one. Then we have Trevor Lawrence of the Jacksonville Jaguars. What a throw to Zay Jones in the back of the end zone. They had to check to make sure he caught it, but somehow he kept his entire body inbounds and was able to corral it. What an incredible catch from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Then from one AFC South team to another, how about the great Derrick Henry of the Tennessee Titans doing it once again. He became famous for his stiff arms, and here's another ridiculous one against Marcus May of the Saints. Just absolutely pushes him out of the way, trucks him out of the way. Derrick Henry doing his thing right from the get-go this season in week one. It was a phenomenal week for the San Francisco 49ers. How about Christian McCaffrey? Incredible rushing performance, incredible spin move, taking it to the house. Great blocks from Brandon Ayuk. The 49ers look dominant against the Steelers in week one. The future looks bright in Green Bay. How about Romeo Dobbs from Jordan Love? Young QB, young receiver, finding that connection right from the get-go in week one. Love back of the end zone, finds Dobbs, hauls it in. Great touchdown catch. Packers looked good in week one. Tough loss for the New England Patriots, but how about this grab from Hunter Henry, the tight end, the one-hand, left-handed grab. Great catch, great highlight from week one. The first round rookie, B. John Robinson of the Falcons, looks like he has so much promise. Look at this juke move, multiple juke moves on his way to the end zone. The first round running back out of Texas looks like he's off to a great start and going to have one heck of an NFL career. The QB receiver performance of the day would have to be Tua Tagovailoa to Tyreek Hill. 
finding him time after time after time. Some incredible throws, two for a touchdown. Tua goes for 466 yards through the air. Tyree Kill, 215 receiving yards. I mean, just a ridiculous deep ball catcher and deep ball thrower is Tua. And of course, it had to end with the game-winning touchdown going to Tyree Kill to seal the deal for the Dolphins over the Chargers in week one. What a clutch fourth quarter touchdown from Tyree Kill. Great throw for Tua right on the money to win the game. What a disastrous night for the New York Giants and it started like this. Graham Gano, the kicker, gets his kick blocked and Noah Igbenogany of the Dallas Cowboys defense, which looked dominant, takes it all the way to the house and the Cowboys would end up winning 40 to nothing on Sunday night. Let's just say Garrett Wilson has a bright future. What an incredible catch. Maybe a catch of the year candidate already in week one. Just ridiculous stuff from the young receiver. Zach Wilson finds him in the back of the end zone. Somehow he juggles and hauls it in and finds a way to hang on. He just kind of stuck his arm out, but found a way to control it to the ground and not lose it. Just unbelievable stuff. It was a tough opening night for the Jets after losing Aaron Rodgers to that terrible injury. But how about the rookie Xavier Gibson in overtime returning a punt for a touchdown to win the game for the Jets? Just an incredible return. Only the third return touchdown to win a game in overtime to start off the Jets season 1-0. Hi, my name is Eric Perry and I'm the proud owner of Eco Roofing Solutions. I've been in this industry for over 25 years and I'm the current president of the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association. Our mission is to provide the absolute best customer experience and we operate all over the entire state of Arizona. We will come out and provide a courtesy, no obligation roof inspection to you, as well as an estimate within 24 hours. Our team is dedicated to providing the best quality product and workmanship, and we're here to serve you. You can call us at 480-695-7736, or check us out online at ecoroofaz.com. To learn more about us, you can find me on Instagram at yourbeardedroofer or at ecoroofingsolutionsaz. We are proud supporters of our community's youth in the next generation, and we would love for you to come and join the hashtag EcoFamily today. Call Eric and his team at Eco Roofing Solutions, 480-695-7736, and they'll give you a fast, free, no-nonsense estimate. Tell them Vince sent you. I'm Jason Goldie for the Varsity Sports Show. Fall ball starts this week for community colleges around the valley. I recently met up with interim head coach Ty Gavin of the Scottsdale Community College baseball team to talk about the upcoming season. How does the team look this season? Yeah, so uh, you know, on the on the offensive side, uh, we are you know a little bit more mature. We have a, a good group of sophomores, some returners from last year, um, and then on the pitching side, it's a lot of new faces. Um, so we're excited to get these guys going, and and so far it's been a been a really hard working group. So. Uh, you know, we're, we're excited to kind of see, you know, how much better we can get this fall. And then obviously, you know, when, when springtime comes, uh, ready to compete there and, and, and have a quality team. You know, I think with the group of guys we have um, that, you know, you know the, we, can, we can push this thing, you know, as far as we can, as far as, a, you know, a, a conference championship goes. So that's the ultimate goal. Your first fall ball game is this Friday against Phoenix College. What do you expect to see from the team? Uh, just a lot of hustle, honestly. Uh, that's the, uh, the the main goal is is to right now just kind of see what what type of people we have. Um, the baseball, we're still early in the uh, development portion of the fall, um, so really just trying to see what our character is, um, and you know it kind of goes back to those core values I talked about. Can we show some toughness out there? Uh, can we show a team first mindset, uh, some accountability, and then and then commitment level. Um, but really just trying to work on the person right now and, uh, you know, establish those, those core values. Any last thoughts? Um, no, thank you for the time. And, uh, you know, would love to have a, a good crowd out at these games as these guys work very hard um, on the field and, uh, you know, in the classroom as well. So uh, when, when we start playing games, obviously, uh, you know, the more people that are out to watch them, uh, you know, the, the better it is for, for the guys and the, the better atmosphere they get to play on. So, uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to having everyone out this fall and spring. Thank you, Coach Gavin. Good luck this season. Thank you. Appreciate it. And there you have it, straight from the coach's mouth. Again, community college fall ball starts this week. 
For the Varsity Sports Show, I'm Jason Goldie. Hi, my name is Eric Perry and I'm the proud owner of Eco Roofing Solutions. I've been in this industry for over 25 years and I'm the current president of the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association. Our mission is to provide the absolute best customer experience and we operate all over the entire state of Arizona. We will come out and provide a courtesy, no obligation roof inspection to you as well as an estimate within 24 hours. Our team is dedicated to providing the best quality product and workmanship and we're here to serve you. You can call us at 480-695-7736 or check us out online at ecoroofaz.com. To learn more about us, you can find me on Instagram at yourbeardedroofer or at ecoroofingsolutionsaz. We are proud supporters of our community's youth in the next generation and we would love for you to come and join the hashtag ecofamily today. Call Eric and his team at Eco Roofing Solutions, 480-695-7736, and they'll give you a fast, free, no-nonsense estimate. Tell them Vince sent you. Hi, my name is Eric Perry, and I'm the proud owner of Eco Roofing Solutions. I've been in this industry for over 25 years, and I'm the current president of the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association. Our mission is to provide the absolute best customer experience, and we operate all over the entire state of Arizona. We will come out and provide a courtesy, no obligation roof inspection to you, as well as an estimate within 24 hours. Our team is dedicated to providing the best quality product and workmanship, and we're here to serve you. You can call us at 480-695-7736, or check us out online at ecoroofaz.com. To learn more about us, you can find me on Instagram at yourbeardedroofer or at ecoroofingsolutionsaz. We are proud supporters of our community's youth in the next generation, and we would love for you to come and join the hashtag ecofamily today. Call Eric and his team at Eco Roofing Solutions, 480-695-7736, and they'll give you a fast, free, no-nonsense estimate. Tell them Vince sent you. I'm so excited to be a fall 2023 varsity sports intern. I'm currently a senior at Arcadia High School and host the morning news. My dream is to be a sideline reporter for an MLB team. I'll be hosting the Scottsdale Sports Report. See you then. Hey everyone, I'm Bobby Murphy and I'm a senior in the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications. I've been a digital reporter and photographer in the past and I'm excited to join Varsity Sports Show as a play-by-play -play announcer and color commentator. What's inside you? Is it strength? Is it speed? Is it knowledge of the game? Unlocking the greatness inside you means digging deeper, running faster, and going further than you can on your own. Banner Sports Medicine High Performance Center trains the athlete in all of us with technology, techniques, and hands-on experience customized to you. See what you're capable of by unlocking the greatness inside of you. When you think of family restaurants and sports bars, think Bonfire. Bonfire is part of the Tempe landscape, supporting local schools. Join the Bonfire Booster Club Challenge. Mention Corona del Sol, Desert Vista, Marcos Denisa, Mountain Point, or Valley Christian, and that school's sports program will earn loyalty points. The winner after football season will earn a fundraiser at Bonfire. Come for the food and fun, support the community. Bonfire, open every day east of I-10 on Warren. Show your game ticket all day Friday and Saturday and get 15% off. 480-306-6801. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. And we are back here at Arcadia High School getting set for the second half between the Coconino Panthers and the Arcadia Titans. Scores 28 to six for Arcadia. We really were not expecting this. We saw two teams that have been dominant offensively, dominant defensively, undefeated. Coconino coming down from Flagstaff, Arizona, down to Phoenix. I'm Connor Manning here, live with Bobby Murphy and Michael Manny. 
And Bobby, I mean, if you're Arcadia, you really can't get much better first half than that. Yeah, this is one of the best halves that halves that they've played all season. Of course, 26 at half, four touchdowns. First one, Rooney touchdown pass to Jeremy Smith. Second one, identical play, left corner of the end zone, kind of a fade route to Alex Alba. Third touchdown to start off the second quarter. Forced in the Wildcat three-yard run, just right up the middle, and then to end the to end the first half, the. Rooney touchdown pass to Jeremy Smith where he just mossed the defender. But, yeah, both sides looking amazing on the – on. excuse me, both sides of the football looking amazing for Arcadia. And on the other end of the spectrum, Michael, it couldn't have been much worse of a first quarter for Coconino. They, they really hadn't been tested defensively, but they have been really punched in the mouth here. And now the question is, how do you respond in the second half? That's got to be what – that's got to be what head coach Gary Cook is thinking about here. And Coconino just needs to chip away. When you have a big deficit like this, all you can do is chip away and get stops. And they need to generate some positive momentum. They got into the red zone before. They had positives in the first half. It's just finishing. They weren't able to finish those couple drives in the red zone, settled for field goals, and now they need to make something happen here early on or else this game could get more out of hand than it already was. Well, they have that opportunity to kind of dig into that deficit. They will get the ball to start the second half. Cole Hageman, who's been pretty good for Coconino on the returns. He had that nice return right at the end of the half. He's back there as well as Angelo Baca for the Coconino Panthers. Garrick Hayo kicking away that all-star kicker for Arcadia we've been talking so highly of all season. Looks to boot it away, and I mean, more often than not, he's kicking into the end zone, so we'll see if Coconino even has a chance to return this one. And for this Coconino offense, they're just going to look to just move the chains. We saw them move the chains a lot in the first half earlier, but just a lot of drives ending poorly or just with the field goal, which penalties have really been killing this team a lot of personal fouls a lot of offensive penalties to move them back but penalties really have been killer for Coconino. Michael we have been talking about that that was our big thing first half here right as we get set for the kick Coconino has to clean up those mistakes. They do and they have to limit those in the second half that's it didn't hurt them as much as it could have last week against Payson. Arcadia is a much better team. You have to be able to limit those mental mistakes in the second half if they're going to get back into this one. All right, we're set to go here for the second half. Garrett Kyle ready to boot it away, and he does. And this one is going to the back of the end zone. A big kick, and Coconino will start at the 20. And we're going to see who's going to be quarterback for Coconino. It's been Bridger French or Colton Buckingham. We saw some promise from Bridger French, when he was in there, he was really effective at just taking the ball and literally just taking it and running it right from the snap. He's kind of been the best player for Coconino. He's really been the only spark. He has, but Buckingham's shown promise too. But it's his first ever start. He's had pressure in his face all night. So there's been some positive things, but it's been rough sledding. But that's to be expected when you're in your first high school game, or varsity game, I should say. First down and 10 here. Looks like they're going back to Bridger French, lining up at quarterback. In shotgun formation, he takes the snap. He's going to take it himself. Looked like he was stuffed there. Still on his feet, but he is dragged down. And that he was tackled behind the, behind the line of scrimmage by John Coulter. They really sniffed that out. And that is not what you start. That's not what you wanted for Coconino, the first play of the second half. And it'll be second down and 11 here as Coconino will look to really just get something. They can't afford on this drive to not get anything. It, at this point, a field goal won't even really do anything because every time they kick a field goal, Arcadia just returns with a touchdown as we get set here for second down. One receiver on the left, two on the right. Buckingham back, he takes a snap, he's going deep. The toss into the hands, but it was dropped on the play. That could have been a really big turn for the Coconino Panthers. That was Noble Young Blackout, who had a big catch earlier for the Panthers. Third and 11 here. 53 seconds gone in the third quarter. Coconino, we said it was a kind of a desperation drive, and once again, it's not really going anywhere, Michael. No, it's not, and this is dire straits if it wasn't before. Third down and long. Desperately need a first down here. Buckingham still in QB, shotgun formation. He's going to take the snap, looks to his right. 
and it was blocked down. He was looking for Angelo Baca. He had his back turned. He wasn't ready for the pass. It might have been blocked down by Arcadia defender John Coulter. It kind of just, it looked, it even looked like it might have been picked there by Carter Prude, who was right there, but it was just, it, it just fell on the ground. Fourth down, Chris Roos standing at his own 41 to take the punt, and Coconino did not do anything there. Bobby, great defense by Arcadia. And that defense on that drive, one of the only three and outs for Coconino after only scoring six in the first half. Not a lot of three and outs for that offense. Ruse calls for the fair catch at about the Coconino 49. Back out here is this Arcadia offense looking to extend the lead to 29. Bobby, great field position for Arcadia. And Braylon Rooney and the offense will come out firing. Expect a little bit more of a run, a heavy offense in the second half just to get the clock going a little bit. You're going to see a lot of Brady Forrest and maybe even some of the other guys that who is in the second half. Well, we saw this last week. Arcadia built up a big lead on Ben Franklin at halftime, started running the clock, milking the clock. They still were able to get a touchdown, but it was more of just like that containment mode, giving it off to Brady Forrest, who we know is Mr. Consistency. He's able to get the ball up the field when you need him to. He's going to take that first handoff. Gets to the right side. A shoelace tackle there. He picked up about eight or nine yards. That was Prayer Young Black Goat able to make the stop. And just exactly what you needed for Arcadia. Good chunk on first down there. They're actually going to say he only picked up seven. So second and three here. Ball on the 43-yard line. Arcadia going to take their time, really milk the clock here. And Michael, I mean, if you're Coconino, if you give up a touchdown here at this point in this game, I mean, it's DEFCON 5, I would say. As he hands a snap off to Brady Force, he's going up the left side now. He's going to get the first down. We thought he might have been grabbed by the helmet there. But regardless, it is a first down. Once again, Bobby Brady Force doing it all. And you kind of saw in that play there, the, sn the snap literally, or really only Rooney and Force moving. All the wide receivers staying still kind of looked like a delay for a sack, but looks like it was planned as everyone just stayed still there on the outside. New fresh set of downs for Arcadia. Two minutes gone here in the second half. Braden Rooney in shotgun formation. Running the clock, run all the way down. Three seconds left, he's gonna take the snap. He's gonna look to throw it. Has pressure, he's going deep. He might have someone. Just a little too far. That was Drew Smith he was looking for. We saw earlier Drew Smith had a nice long catch, but unfortunately it was called back due to a penalty. Second down and 10 here. And Rudin taking a deep shot there. I mean, you're, of course you're gonna see a little bit of that in the second half. There's not gonna be all running game, but Rooney, especially with the lead, I. On these passing plays, I think that he's going to want to take some deep shots down the field. And we see a Coconino player on the ground. We will be right back. Hello, Arizona sports fans. I'm Lofton Lechner, and I couldn't be happier to be joining the Varsity Sports team as a technical director for fall 2023. Follow me on Twitter at Lofton Lechner to stay locked in for the season. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. I'm Ryan Sikor. I'm going to be one of the interns this fall at the Varsity Sports Show. So happy to be with you guys this year. I've loved sports for as long as I can remember, and I cannot wait to be with you guys on Thursday, Friday, and even some Saturdays all this year. Hello everyone, my name is Connor Manning, and I am thrilled to be a part of the Varsity Sports team this fall. I look forward to build off my own commentating I did in high school, calling some great moments throughout the season and gain lots of valuable experience for the future. Catch you guys at the games. We are back here at Arcadia High School. Second down and 10. Ball on the 37 yard line. Braylon Rooney under center. Hands it off to Brady Force up the middle. Has daylight tripped up again at the 15. That is going to be another first down. Brady Force once again 
cutting through this Coconino defense. It was Prayer Young Black Goat once again making the tackle, stopping Brady Force from getting any further. Couple of personnel changes for Arcadia once again. Brady Force doing it all. And what a great stop there by Young Black Goat to possibly stop a touchdown there. There was a safety on the outside there who still could have made the stop, but great tackle to stop that and great run by Forrest again. First down and 10 here for the Titans. Panthers hurrying to get lined up here. Rooney hands it off and met immediately by a Coconino defender. That was Jackson Guerrero stopping Forrest behind the line and that's really the first positive play we've seen by Coconino this half, Michael. That is, and that's just a great job of penetrating the interior line there by Jackson Guerrero. Just that's one of the few negative plays, you're right, that Arcadia has had on the Seven running game slow. all night long. Well, we had seen the last couple of plays, they've been just going with forced back like, over and over. You had to have wondered when Coconino was eventually going to try and realize, eventually going to realize that that's who they're going back to. And second and 11 here as Arcadia looks to regroup. Rooney takes the snap, looks to throw. And a dangerous throw is tipped and, and incomplete. That was Angelo Baca with the deflection. It will be third down and 11 for Arcadia. And back-to-back -back good plays by Coconino's defense, kind of slowing things down for Arcadia. And it was an incomplete ball, so it's not like you're losing any time here, Michael. No, you're not. And Baca and Prairie Young Blackout back in the area. For Arcadia, lucky that wasn't an interception on that ricochet. That ball stayed up in the air, that extra second where somebody could have got to it. but. It might be third down and long, but you still need a stop here, and those have come at a premium if you're Coconino tonight. Well, we've kind of seen that a lot this game, a lot of third downs that Arcadia has been managed to convert on. This is their first really third and long that they've had to face as Rooney's going to go back to pass. He's met with a lot of defenders. He's got Ian Slater caught for a touchdown. Arcadia, Braylon Rooney back to that left corner again. Finds his third different receiver for this game, his fourth touchdown pass of the game. He is electric. And Michael, we were just talking about our Coconino had back-to-back -back good stops on defense, but they lost Slater in coverage wide open. And this might have been the nail in the coffin for this game. It may have been. And I mean, how many times you say it? Braylon, Ro Braylon Rooney throws one of the best touch passes in the 4A conference. Just a loopy, pretty spiral just into the arms of Ian Slater where it's right, Coconino let Slater get behind them and once that happened, that's about all she wrote for that play. Bobby, another perfect throw by Braylon Rooney. We've kind of seen him, it's, it's been hit or miss this game, but when it's hit, it is paid off. His fourth touchdown pass of the game and a completion there on the extra point, 35-6, Arcadia rolling over Coconino right now and it couldn't we, we said it couldn't have been a worse first half couldn't have been a better first half but at the same narratives are starting to play here in the second half they get that quick three and out they punch it in Bobby Arcadia is rolling right now they are looking good and for Rooney with his fourth touchdown pass of the game on a lot of his deep balls you've seen the ones that are incomplete kind of lofting up in the air kind of just going for the height really but on these touch passes more of pretty much every single touchdown pass he's thrown so far, again, on, the, on one of the left or right sides of the field, of all of his touchdown passes tonight, I think that was the best one. That was a beautifully thrown touch pass and just perfect right into the hands of Slater. But yeah, of all of those passes, that one might have been the best. Well, Michael, we've been kind of talking. We've, been, we've we brought out the DEF CON scale every time there's been a touchdown. Is there a DEFCON 6? Because I feel like Coconino's there right now. If there is one, that's where we're at. <laughs> and I've mentioned before how much Coconino needs to make something happen on their preceding last few drives. Now it is, it has to be touchdown or bust anything to cut into this deficit. Well, every time we've talked about Coconino needing a touchdown, they did not get it and Arcadia extended their lead further as Garrett Kyle boots that one into the end zone once again. That is not something that we don't have to say off. Excuse me, that's something we commonly say. Garrett Kyle punching it into the back of the end zone. He's got a leg. We were talking to the athletic director, Jeff Alba, at the beginning of the season. We knew what we were expecting from him. 
as Coconino comes back out on offense here. They are, we don't even want to say it's desperation mode. They, they just need to like stop the bleeding. They are bleeding profusely right now. Just getting something will be better than nothing. As we begin here, first down and 10. Ball on the 20 as with every touchback. Buckingham in shotgun formation. He's got French on his right. He takes the snap. He's going to look to throw. Looks to his right, then changes to a left. He's going to take it to himself. Picks up a couple there. Late hit by number 27 on Arcadia. That was, or excuse me, that wasn't 27. There was a hit there by a Titan. He only picked up about two yards there. Second down and eight here. And for, and for this Coconino offense, of course, you're seeing a lot of defensive pressure from the D-line of Arcadia just really getting to Buckingham or even French if he is in the backfield. Buckingham again, he's got three receivers on the right, one on the left here, second down and eight. He's in shotgun formation as we've seen really mainly from both quarterbacks. Buckingham going deep, he's got a receiver and he's overthrown by a few yards there. That was intended for Noble Young Black, or, young, or Black Goat, excuse me. And third down and eight for Coconino who's explosive run rush game offense has really turned into like a desperation pass game and that's not really working them for them so far no that's not the game that that's not coconino's game but you're at the point in the game where you where you need to pass the ball and buckingham's just had pressure in his face all night i wondered heading into this drive what they were going to do here looks like they're heading into the passing game but it hasn't worked well so far in this half Arcadia up big here, third down and eight. Another pass, this time it is caught for a first down. And that was Noble Young Black Goat. He was able to make the catch and for the first time we've really seen in a few drives a first down for Coconino as they move up the field here. And they're gonna slow it down a little bit as they reset the chains. And that was one of the one kind of blown covers by Arcadia's defense tonight. It looked like the cornerback, the cornerback kind of slipped a little bit there, but their, their coverage has looked amazing so far. First down and 10 here. Ball on the 37-yard line. Hands off to French. French up the middle, fights for a hard five or six. And... We will continue play here, 6.32 to go here in the third quarter. Michael, we're seeing something here. They are down big with not a whole lot of time left. We are in the third quarter, but looking at the score, it, they need something quick here. They're, they're making progress, but they need to go faster. They do, because time's going to run out before you know it. Still six minutes to go in the third here, but it's going to be time for the hurry-up offense here before long. Second down and four. Buckingham takes the snap, throws it, and it's caught. And there's a flag behind the play. It might have been incomplete. There were a few Arcadia Titan players protesting it. It will not matter. It was a holding call on Coconino anyway, so they're going backwards. And even if that was a completion, Michael, another dis momentum destroying play for the Panthers. That is, that was a good pass from Buckingham. It's just, it's demoralizing if you're, if you're the Panthers, any forward offensive momentum, and then a penalty like that. That's what you call a drive-killing penalty. Now having to move all the way back. It looks like they're going to spot him at the, oh, it's at about the 30, 38. So we'll have second and, looks like the holding call Looks like the holding penalty took place up the field, so they didn't really move super far back. It will be second and four again. Shotgun formation for Buckingham. He takes it, hands it off to French. French wrestled down. He maybe picked up one or two there. As we look to see who made the tackle, looks like it was Corey Beal. Kari Beeler, excuse me, I apologize for that. Although he looks like he is down on the play. We will be right back here after this injury timeout. 
Hey everyone, I'm Bobby Murphy and I'm a senior in the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications. I've been a digital reporter and photographer in the past and I'm excited to join Varsity Sports Show as a play-by-play -play announcer and color commentator. Hey everyone, my name is Jason Goldie from the Varsity Sports Show. I love sports and fell in love with sports broadcasting back in high school. I can't wait to bring you my unique perspective because I am on the autism spectrum and sometimes I view things a little differently. When you think of family restaurants and sports bars, think Bonfire. Bonfire is part of the Tempe landscape, supporting local schools. Join the Bonfire Booster Club Challenge. Mention Corona del Sol, Desert Vista, Marcos Denisa, Mountain Point, or Valley Christian, and that school's sports program will earn loyalty points. The winner after football season will earn a fundraiser at Bonfire. Come for the food and fun, support the community. Bonfire, open every day east of I-10 on Warner. Show your game ticket all day Friday and Saturday and get 15% off, 480-306-6801. My name is Kyle Kroyan, and I'm a sophomore studying journalism at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. I am thrilled to join the Varsity Media Foundation as a technical director following Horizon High School football this fall. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Kyle Krikorian. What's inside you? Unlocking the greatness inside you means digging deeper and going further than you can on your own. Banner Sports Medicine High Performance Center uses the latest technologies to train the athlete in all of us. Unlock the greatness inside of you. Hi, my name is Eric Perry and I'm the proud owner of Eco Roofing Solutions. I've been in this industry for over 25 years and I'm the current president of the Arizona Roofing Contractors Association. Our mission is to provide the absolute best customer experience, and we operate all over the entire state of Arizona. We will come out and provide a courtesy, no obligation roof inspection to you, as well as an estimate within 24 hours. Our team is dedicated to providing the best quality product and workmanship, and we're here to serve you. You can call us at 480-695-7736, or check us out. And we are back after the injury timeout. Third and 13 here for the Panthers. Takes the low snap to the outside and way off target. And it will be fourth down for Coconino. So we saw a potentially promising drive. Goes by the wayside and Guerrero is back out to punt for the Panthers. And Michael at this point, what do you do if you're Coconino? I mean, that's, that's the tough decision, right, is you kind of have to punt this away just because of where, you, where you, you are on the field, but you're just giving it back to a red-hot Arcadia offense. But, but going for it here, that's... Oh, oh and that what? one was nearly blocked by Jackson Crandall. He put his hands up to his head. He wanted that one badly. He, he knew he should have had it, and that would have been at the very best a touchdown at the very worst first and 10 from the 28 but they will take over from the 35 Bobby at this point do you just run it out I mean you're up by 29 I mean for the rest of the third quarter I expect them just to run their normal offense maybe a little bit more running but I still think Rooney's gonna throw the ball a little bit here at least for the rest of the quarter just to get some reps and then we might see Zach Smith come in by some time in the fourth Five thirteen to go here. First and ten. Rooney still in the game. Takes the snap. Quick throw to Jackson Crandall. Crandall, nice move. Picks up a couple. Looks like he picked up about six on the play. It'll be second and short. Quick pass by Rooney there. Really just kind of getting the ball to his receivers and just getting up the field and using that clock. And we've seen a lot more Jackson Crandall in this game than we have in the past. We've seen him out wide a lot more. We've seen him on punt returns on special teams on the last one almost blocking that punt which he was very animated about on the field upset he didn't get that but a lot more of the 5-9 junior so far this game. Second down is short here. Three, two receivers on the left, one on the right. Rooney and shotgun. Takes a snap. Another quick throw. It is caught and it will be a first down. On the plate, I want to see who that was that made the catch. It looks like it was Jeremy Smith. 
who has had quite the game himself, Bobby. Two touchdown catches, including that Moss catch we were talking about earlier. Of course, and there's a lot of talented receivers on this team, but Jeremy Smith is undoubtedly the wide receiver one. He's looked amazing so far. Great routes, great hands, and just great overall awareness by him on the field. First down here, we have seen that a lot. Rooney using a lot of his weapons, using Smith, using Slater, using Alba. As he pitches it to Brady Forrest, who is another weapon. He rushes to the outside. I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage there, so it'll be second down and long. Brady Forrest on the carry right out of bounds. But the clock keeps running here. 3.46 to go in the third quarter. Arcadia up comfortably once again here at home. At this point, they were kind of just doing the same thing against Ben Franklin. They were up 31-0 at one point. Now it's 35-6. Michael, for Arcadia, I mean, this is, this is a dangerous, dangerous team. It is. It's very much so. It, and I, Bobby and I, we talked about this last week, is that Arcadia can this beat you in different problem. ways. They can beat you throwing the ball over the top. They can beat you with a quick passing game. They can beat you with running the ball just up straight up the defensive line's throat. That's what makes this Arcadia team so dangerous. And as we head into region play here coming up, I think that's what's going to make this team one that's built to go for the long haul because they're so versatile, they can beat you in so many ways. As we begin second down here, Bobby, I'll talk to you in a second after this play about the conversation we had with Jeff Alba. The handoff once again to Force Picks up a little bit more here. Looks like he's going to take about three yards for a third and seven. We talked when we were in Sarita, when they played Walden Grove two weeks ago, we talked about how Alba knew that this offense was gonna be special. He said, we weren't sure about the defense. We thought we were gonna be in a lot of you know, shootouts. But the defense has played really well. They've given up an average of like 10 points the last two games. And Jeff could not have been more right about that offense, how explosive they can be. But yeah, this defense has looked amazing so far this year. Easily, this has been the best performance of the year up there with St. Mary's. Third down and seven here. Two and a half minutes to go. Rooney rolls out to his right, throws it, and it is caught. That is Drew Smith with the catch. This time it will count. And a first down for Arcadia. And once again, keeping the clock rolling here, staying on the field, letting time run and just getting to that point where they're in cruise control here. Good throw by Rooney though, Bobby. Oh yeah, Rooney rolling out to his right, kind of an off-balance throw. Hitting Drew Smith in really the only spot where he could, and what a catch by Drew Smith. I mean, extended hands pretty much as much as possible. His arms were fully straight there, and just what a great catch by Drew Smith and a great throw by Rooney. Well, and, and Michael, we've seen Arcadia's Rooney, he's thrown it, trying to throw it only to places where his receivers can catch it. We'll talk to you in just a second here after this run by Forrest. Excuse me, that was um, Pablo Havalera. Or it was Joe Hoos, excuse me. Sorry, the numbers are a little confusing for myself. But Michael, we were talking about how when Rooney was throwing, when he's out of the pocket, he was really trying to only throw where they his receivers can catch it. Some of them are overthrown, some of them are a little too far out of bounds, but not that one. No, not that is right in the breadbasket. He put that one right where only his receiver can get it. That's another thing that Raylan Rooney, I think, does really, really well. Second and three here. The handoff up the middle. And Joe Hoos is gonna carry it. And that is a first down for Acadia once again keeping the clock going, staying on the field as we near the one minute mark here in the third quarter. And Arcadia doing what they do best when they're at this position in the game. Running the clock, staying on the field, not allowing their, not allowing the opposition to get back into it. And the time of, time of possession for this game has really been skewed a lot towards Arcadia, just being able to run the clock so well, not even just with the run heavy offense, but passing as well. They're able to control that clock a lot. The handoff, oh, a big hit. That was Hunter Navarro with the big hit on Ryan Jimenez as Arcadia is getting a lot of different looks at running back for 
their squad, but Michael, big hit there by Navarro. It is, and that shows this defense is not ready to lay down quietly. They're still in this game. There's still a lot of pride on that defense, and that was a stick by Navarro. And that looks like that's going to be the last play of the third quarter, 12 seconds left. They got more time on the play clock. Ray Brown says, you know what, just come over here. We'll let it go down here as we start the fourth quarter. Bobby, it, it really has kind of been one of those games for the Titans where they just, they've done everything right that they've needed to. Oh yeah, and at the running game, especially in the second half, I mean, you're seeing, of course, a lot of force, but you're seeing a lot more of, the, of who's and Ryan Jimenez, who played a lot more in the second half last week against Benjamin Franklin, and he looks really good in his time as well. And, and you can't, you can't ask for more than to get some of your younger players more experience. It's super important to get these guys reps when you can, especially in a, in a blowout like this, ris not risking injury for your starters, especially when you get into the grit and grind of the season, when you're in regional play, you're going to need those guys. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see Zach Smith come in in this fourth quarter. Maybe Ray Brown's going to let Rooney finish this drive, but at least after this drive, I would expect Zach Zach, excuse me, Zach Smith to come in and get some reps under center. Well, and, and Michael, we were talking about how this was the first start for Buckingham. You could, you, there was probably some nerves, probably some uncertainty of what was going to happen. If you get someone like Smith in a game like this getting those reps, that can only help him when he takes over once Rooney graduates in a few years. Yeah, exactly. And Zach Smith, he showed a lot of positive signs last week against Benjamin Franklin. Only complete, excuse me, completed a couple passes. Would have had more if a few of them weren't negated by penalties. He showed a lot of positive signs too, and yeah, that's exactly it. It's confidence, confidence, confidence. Second and seven here, Rooney back out there. He's going to throw to Smith, and it's caught down at the six-yard line. Jeremy Smith, another catch over the head. This time of TJ Begay and Arcadia once again knocking on the door for another touchdown and if they get a touchdown here it is running clock because they will be over 35 points Bobby that's another thing that you really want to once you're up by this which is getting off the field and of course you see that connection there between Rooney and Smith if force doesn't have the ball it's like we're going to be a Rooney pass to Jeremy Smith where he's just been so reliable this game so far. First and goal from the five. Braylon Rooney under center. Oh, and another bobbled snap. That's the second time that's happened. He's able to get it back, but they lose about five yards on the play. And Bobby, we saw that in the second quarter where just something happened when he was under center there. A, a miscommunication, he lost the football there. Yeah, but both times he's been able to jump on top of it. Of course, with the bouncing ball, it can be kind of tough to get on. But the good thing for Rooney, after a play like that, he knows that he's going to have more, more room to drop back, have some more room, and just drop a dot into the back of the end zone, which I would fully expect to happen here. Either it's Nick Gentner on the left, or on the, we have Alex Alba on the right side. Alex oh, Alba on the right side. Alex Alba has a touchdown catch this game. Rooney's going to take it himself. There is no one there. Braylon Rooney putting the excla exclamation point on this game with his fifth touchdown of the game, his first on the ground. And for the junior quarterback who told himself he wanted to be more diverse at the beginning of the year, he has done just that. Another big game by him. 10.38 to go, Arcadia is up 41-6. Garrick Heil looking to put another extra point on the board and Michael, at this point, if you're Coconino, you gotta worry about next week because you gotta you gotta take this is a tough loss, but you gotta start worrying about next week. You can't get it let you can't let it get that bad. No, you can't. And if you're coach and uh, if you're coach Cook, you just wanna see some positive signs for this fourth quarter. Let just something to grow extra on for practice good. heading into next week. And they've got another big one next week too in Santan Valley at Post and View. And that very well could be the end of the night for Braylon Rooney with his fifth touchdown of the night, one on the ground and four in the air to three different receivers. But Zach Smith last week against Benjamin Franklin, we saw the first drive not go so well. O he wasn't happy. O-line didn't look great. But that second drive, he's able to lead them to a touchdown drive. And that second drive, Zach Smith, if we do see him later in this game, he did look a lot more comfortable and reps would be huge for him. 
Well, as we get set to kick it away here, after the touchdown run by Rooney, Michael, you were right. I mean, Boston Butte, one and two right now, but they got a big, they got a, they got another test next week. They're coming back down from Flagstaff, and if you're Coconino, I mean, I think at this point you're really just playing for next week. All right, if you were in the stands, they are still in the field. Let them know that you are still up here. And second home game of the season for Arcadia. Of course, they won here last week against Benjamin Franklin, but put it on a show like once again for the fans and had a big showing tonight by the student section, parents, fans, all around. Another big turnout for the Arcadia High Titans football team. Heil boots it away. This one is going back into the end zone, so another touchback for... Arcadia and we were talking about Coconino's next game we are now going to talk about Arcadia Arcadia next week on the road against Camelback and that is going to be a big game for them as well another uh, a, a inner city matchup taking on the Spartans and should be a good game yeah going to Camelback will be one of their biggest or one of their toughest showings of, or excuse me, one of their toughest opponents of the year so far. But with the way they've been looking tonight and so far this season, I mean, even against St. Mary's, somehow tonight Arcadia has looked even better. Arcadia continues to prove every week. Buckingham with the toss. That was to Cole Hageman. Picked up a few. Took a big hit there. That was Cody Bowers for the Titans with the hit, second down and five. Clock's just gonna run and run and run here. As Coconino will look to salvage something out of this game. Arcadia, I mean, unless we see one of the biggest miracles of all time, Arcadia is gonna improve to 4-0. They've just really looked impressive, especially after that scare in Walden Grove where it really came down to a goal line stop by Kylie Beal and that defensive line up the middle and it is caught. That was nearly picked off by Beckham Flynn, but it is completed on the play. And that was Hageman once again. What a play, it looked like it was picked off there for a second. From up here, it definitely looked like that was the case. Clock's gonna continue to run here. And we were talking about how for this Arcadia team, they've got a couple more games before they're back into section play where they play Mesquite on October 6th. And for Arcadia, it's just getting better every week. Buckingham fakes the handoff up the middle, just over the head of Prayer Young Blackgoat. The second down, clock's gonna continue to run here because of the runtime rule for the AIA. Yeah, you have been seeing Colton Buckingham, even if not completing these last two. Just looking, he looks does look a lot more comfortable in the pocket out there, not scrambling around, just staying in the pocket and just delivering a sharp throw, even if they have been incomplete. Well, and Michael, do you continue this passing game? I know it's a weird circumstance, but do, do you try and go back to the, what you know best next week? I think part of this is just it's reps to improve for next week, too, if you're Buckingham. Buckingham, another completed pass. This time it was Angela Baca who completed at about the 49-yard line. At this point, it's mostly just backups for both teams. Although Arcadia still, or uh, Coconino still has a few starters in. 8.37 to go here in the fourth quarter. Third down and short. And Michael, you're right. It's just about getting reps at this point, continuing to get better every week. And Working towards next week, I mean, you kind of got to put this one, kind of got to shake this one off and worry about next week. In football, you got to have a short memory, and yeah, that's going to be the case for this week. Buckingham to throw once again, met by a few Titans. He's going to get the first down as he gets to about the 38-yard line. So he's able to escape some danger there, the pressure coming from that Titan front line. Continuing the drive here for Coconino, who really this is like the this is the really the first drive all half that they've really been getting something consistently here. Yeah, I mean in the entire game you haven't really except for the a few drives in the first half you haven't seen them on the Arcadia side of the field. Of course they did have the field goals and then 
a few drives where they got over but can turn into anything. But this is one of the only times in the second half that you've seen Co Coconino on the Arcadia side. Buckingham takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to French, who just bursts through the middle to about the 26-yard line. He really was untouched there for about six or seven yards. And that will move the sticks once again. Coconino putting together an impressive drive here in the fourth quarter as we near the halfway point. First down and 10 here. Two receivers on the left, one on the right. Got to imagine they're going right back to French. Buckingham takes a snap and he pitches it, yep, right to French. And he picks up about four on the play. He gets to about the 24, 23 yard line. Cody Bowers with the stop. Clock will keep running here for the Panthers offense. And in the second half of the game against Benjamin Franklin last week, you did see the Benjamin Franklin offense turn up a lot. At, in, like near the end of the game, they were able to get on the board with two touchdowns. But Arcadia's about second string defense, even though there are some starters in it. That would be big for just their confidence if they could get a stop here. French down the left side, picked up some more yardage, and that will be a first down as they are inside the 20. Down at about the 13-yard line. Once again, going back to Bridger French, who, as we've been talking about, has really been the most consistently successful player on the field for Coconino this game, Michael. And this is exactly what I just mentioned. Coconino, something to, something to grow on for next week. Flag down. Into the end zone. It is caught by Noble. Young Black Goat for a touchdown, although it might be temporary as there is a flag. And it doesn't look like it is going to count. We will find out in one second here. And it is on the Titans, so the touchdown will count. It is good. Coconino is on the scoreboard. Or excuse me, Coconino is in the end zone for the first time this game. Looks like they are going to just attempt the extra point here. That will be a touchdown for Coconino. Good throw there by Buckingham, getting it to Noble in the right corner. And Coconino finishing with something positive here on what could be their last drive, offensive drive of the game. Ending in six. I mean, Michael, that's something to take away. It is. That's something to grow on for next week. A positive sign for the team to hang their hat on. Villanueva attempts the extra point, and it is good. And so it is now 42 to 13 for the Titans. And you can't imagine Braylon Rooney's going to stay in this game. It looks like Zach Smith might get some reps. And Bobby, I mean, what does this mean for Smith to be able to get some to get some reps in game time? Yeah, like we were talking about earlier, last week he had two drives. First drive didn't go well, didn't have a lot of help with his all line. But second drive, being able to lead the offense to a touchdown drive, it looked really comfortable in the pocket and was able to deliver some solid passes. But of course, Rooney will be the guy for the rest of the season. But God forbid any injury, Zach Smith, if they can get him some, some reps or just at the end of any game, get him out there, that would be huge for him. Chris Hoos and Ryan Jimenez back to receive the kickoff. So you can imagine Brady Force is not going to get any more playing time this game. And I mean, it, at this point, he's done all, he's done everything that he was supposed to. He had the touchdown run. He's had a lot of big runs, keeping drives alive, converting third downs. As Villanueva kicks this one off, this one is a deep kick that will go into the back of the end zone. So Arcadia will start at the 20. And Zach Smith will go into the game, so he will get some reps here. The sophomore for the Titans in his second straight game, as we were talking about last week. And gentlemen, I mean, this we were just talking about, this is really good getting these reps against, I'm assuming we're, we're, we still might see Coconino, some starters out there on defense, not 100% sure. But regardless, it's still good game reps. Yeah, and for the offense, we saw Ryan, we've seen Ryan Jimenez a few times this year late in the game getting some reps, and he's really delivered with some efficient carries in his limited time, mostly in the fourth quarter, because, of course, they do have a 
an array of running backs, of course, led by Forrest. But Jimenez is one of the guys who has looked really good when he's been on the field this year. Another great game by the Arcadia offense. They dropped 30, as we saw in all four games this season. They hit 40 for the first time this year. They really were kind of in cruise control last week. They had a really good chance of getting to 40. But this time they do get there. The run up the middle goes for five. It'll be second and five here from the 25 yard line as at this point the Titans are really just gonna kind of eat up all 40 seconds as they look to next week because they are back on the road taking on Camelback and it should be a good matchup. Smith takes the hand, gets it off, up the middle, big hit, down to the 30, this might be a call. Joe Hoos got it to the 30. We see a late flag here, this one might go a little bit more. And it will, so we already thought it might have been a first down, and now it will definitely be a first down, a dead ball personal foul call on Coconino. We'll move Arcadia up a little bit more here. And next week against Camelback, I mean, Red Brown has to be really happy with and ecstatic with how his team has played tonight. But next week, of course, he's going to tell his team that it's a whole new week, whole new game, and he's going to expect the same production from this team. Well, and Michael, I mean, you got to say that on the other end for Cook and Neon. You almost, you almost have to say that, that it's a new week, it's a new game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so like I mentioned earlier, you have to have a short memory in this game. And Coconino's just going to have to wipe this one off the canvas and just start focusing on Post and Butte. Because Post and Butte, one and two on the year like you mentioned, but they were just in the 4A state title game two years ago. That's a formidable program. They will certainly be a test for the Panther squad. Joe, who's up the middle again, he takes up a lot. He at least got eight. They're going to say that he got nine on the play. So even these backup running backs are getting good yardage, getting good reps, and really you can't, it's just more and more for Arcadia that you can be proud of. And again, one of the biggest, one of the biggest things that we've been talking about about this Arcadia team that makes them so dangerous is if it's backups, or if it's starters or backups, you're getting that diverse production. We round four minutes here. Coconino lines up. Smith under center to take the handoff. He gives it up to Jimenez, met behind the line by a few Panthers fighting off a tackle, but they were able to get some help there. And he goes backwards, so it'll be third and a little bit more now. Looks like about two or three on the play. And And they're going to give the first down here. Ball on the 47 yard line. Up the middle, good for a few yards there. That was Charlie Driggs, the senior getting the carry. That's another name that we haven't called this game that's getting their name up there, getting a touch. That's got to be like the sixth or seventh running back for the Titans to get to get their hands on the ball tonight. That's the, And that's the first time I can remember Charlie Driggs getting any carries this year. So it's there is a talented stable of backs here for this Arcadia ball club. Definitely good to back up Forrest and Rooney. As we saw, Rooney was good for running the ball as well. 2.21 to go. Another handoff, this one's near the line. I think he got it. Christian Anaya. That was Christian Anaya on the carry. Third and five here as we approach under two minutes. Folks, make sure to get up early tomorrow for the Varsity Sports Live radio show. Hosted by Vince DiZalizio. I will be co-hosting that, Michael. I'm excited to go on there for the very first time. 8 to 10. We have a large plethora of guests on with 
plenty of great quality content for you. As Smith is gonna run this one, he really didn't go anywhere. He was caught going backwards on the play. Well, on that note, I look forward to getting up and listening to that. I'm excited to co-host the panel. And that was Jace Pasalakua, sorry, I butchered that name, I apologize, was able to get back there and get the stop. So it'll be fourth and 10, so Arcadia, after picking up a few yards on first down, has only gone backwards since. Arcadia calls their first timeout of the second half to kind of talk things over here on fourth down. I'm assuming they're just gonna punt it away here. Although we never know with this Ray Brown coached squad. You would have to think that you just punt it away. You don't want to run up the score any more than it already is. You'd think they'd punt it away. Now what does Coconino do here uh, with two timeouts and just over a minute to go? Well, definitely an opportunity to try something to get even more of a momentum build for next week's game against Poston Butte. And I mean, you know, you, you take a look at that scoreboard, right? It was 28-6 at the half. It's 42-13 now. So, I mean, the net gain was a little bit bigger for Arcadia, but still ending that last possession with a touchdown can do more than you would think as they will just punt it away. Garrett Kyle, who's only punted once this game. And that one punt was a good one. Yeah, it was nearly blocked as that one is nearly blocked too. This one will just roll into the end zone. We do have another flag. So just like last week, we see a lot of flags in the second half as the place kind of slowly stopped. As so we'll figure out what the call is for a second. Aaron Cowboy almost had the punt block for Coconino. We've had no blocks tonight. We've had a couple very close calls. There's been three from my memory, two for Coconino, one for Arcadio. That Arcadio one, Jackson Crandall should have had that one, and he knows it too. Call is on Arcadia. Ball's going to move up a little bit as that won't really do a whole lot for this game with 105 to go. And going back to next week for Coconino, Post and Butte last year, we, we mentioned how they were, were how Coconino had a 21 to nothing lead on Arcadia last year. They had the lead on uh, Post and Butte came up the Flagstaff last year and play and played Coconino. Coconino lost that game 29 to 28. Coconino had the lead in that game too. So there's a lot of these teams that they're seeing again this year. They had a lead on last year. That was the hallmark, uh, not the hallmark, but for lack of a better word, that is it was a recurring theme for Coconino last year is getting an early lead, but closing. Well, something that they will try and look to change is recovering from that, right? This is obviously a loss that is just really something that like you have to sit on for a week. It's a long drive back up to Flagstaff, coming off of a big loss when you really had a lot of momentum after having an early bye week on week two, already taking a week off, you're, you were 2-0 and in the season, coming off of just dominant wins at home, coming down to the Valley, and just not the result they wanted tonight. Garrett Kyle will punt it away again, another booming kick. This one will be caught at the 25, juggled, and this one is going to be recovered. I think it's Arcadia, I thought I saw them getting in there, but it is Coconino recovering it. And there's another flag on the field. We got an injured Titan too. It was 32 Ethan Jeffs who got the ball back after Angelo Baca had the drop. And unfortunately that is James McCormick, the senior lineman hobbling off on the field there. We do have another flag. We will figure out what the referee is going to tell us what they saw there with 36 seconds to go and I mean, Michael, we really just can't seem to get this game to end. And that's a holding penalty, so Garrick's gonna have to punt that away for the third play in a row. He just keeps going farther and farther back. Well, 
Garrett Kyle's really getting his work, his workout tonight. He already had six extra points, but I guess <laughs> the uh, Arcadia punting line was just like, no, we want you to, we want you to kick a little bit more here, as he will now be punting from his own 15, as it is a long, long, long way to go. Fourth and 34. Fourth and Mesa. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth and the distance from here to Flagstaff. And another one. So we would have to think this is delay a game. I think so. The clock is down to six seconds. They're going to just keep rolling the clock, so this might be it. I would assume so. The clock's at four seconds. Might have been too many men on the field for Arcadia. And, I mean... It's not really doing anything really damaging, but if you're Ray Brown, it's kind of like, what is going on here with the with the group? Well, they let the clock bleed down, and oh. this one is blocked, and this one will be returned for a touchdown at the buzzer by Noble Young Black Goat. So you kept making a punt, kept making a punt, kept making a punt. And they finally did get that block. So if you're Ray Brown giving up that touchdown at the end, that is not what you wanted at all. But Coconino, that a walk-off blocked punt. That's something you don't see every day. Something to build on if you're Coconino. 42 to 19 is the score now. I believe in AIA you must complete the extra point, so once again, we, we saw the Titans build this big lead, but kind of let it slowly get smaller. So, so they're winning. It doesn't look as much as it really should have been as the game showed. They decided they're not going to do the extra point. 42 to 19 is going to be the final. Arcadia with a dominant win tonight. They are on the road against Camelback next week. And then they will be back at home Friday, September 29th against Desert Sunrise out of Maricopa for homecoming night. We talked about for Coconino. They're on the road again next week at Poston Butte. I mean, 13 unanswered points to end the game is not something to be – it's something to work with it is, it's some Gary Cook. It's something to build on. And walk-off blocked punt, had that scoring drive at the end. Those are positive things to build on. It's – Arcadia was the better team tonight, but Coconino has a lot to build on. They've got a young quarterback with promise in a fantastic running game. Well, as we said, 42 to 19 is your final for today. Arcadia improves to 4 and 0 on the season. They win another game dominantly at home. They will be we will be back on the call next week against Camelback. Thank you everyone for tuning in tonight.